Hello and welcome to River City Speedway in Grand Forks, North Dakota for live dirt track racing here on Midco Sports Network. Excited to be back with you for a second straight year here at the world famous Bull Ring. Brian Sean, Chris Shearick, Jody Norstead with you here for tonight's races that has four different classes including the NOSA Sprints, NLRA Late Models, B Mods, and Street Stocks. We'll have all the action up, coming up for you here in just a couple of minutes. And Chris, first things first, last year was a lot of fun. We're back, but two new classes this year. Yeah, we have four classes up this year. It's uh... Uh, it should be a, a full show. It should be a fun show. There's a lot of cars in the pits, and it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Now, we weren't sure about 10 o'clock this morning where this track stood. A whole bunch of rain fell up here in Grand Forks late last night into early this morning. They've been feverishly working on the pits and the track all day long, Jody, and the pits did not open until just after 5 o'clock because of how wet it was. Yeah, and they said if, if the track was on the south side of town, they probably would have been just fine, but on the north side, it got dumped on. Uh, pits had out open at about 5.15. Usually it's open earlier than that. People can start working on their cars, but it is a muddy mess back here. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out on the track. And Chris, the NOSA Sprint's coming in here four races last week. Wade Nygaard won two, Mark Dobmeyer won two. You'd have to figure those are the two guys that are the really favorites coming into this race on the sprint car side. Yeah, uh, well, regardless how they did last week, Wade's won a whole bunch of races here and in, in his career, and Dobmeyer's the winningest driver here. So it's if, if you're going to pick two drivers, those are the guys I'd pick. And, Jody, I guess to wrap things up a little bit, 30 street stocks are here. Yeah. That's maybe the biggest surprise, the largest car count. What do you expect out of that class? Yeah, 30 street stocks, 24 Midwest Modifieds here, and it's it's going to be entertaining. Guys heard, hey, this is going to be on TV. I'm going to get my car out there and see what I can do. 30 cars in the street stocks is awesome. Almost 100 cars total here in the pits at River City Speedway tonight. We'll drop the green flag in our coverage here in 2018 from the world-famous Bullring after this on Midco SN. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, again, the flags presented tonight by... Welcome back to River Cities Speedway in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Brian, Sean, Chris Shearick with you. Jody Norris that will be joining us throughout the night from both the infield and the pits. And Chris, despite all the rain, what Mother Nature handed this track, got to hand it to the track officials, able to get the pits dried out, the track dried out. We should have a good night of racing here. Yeah, they actually were adding water to the track. Um, if they could have taken water away from the pits and added it to the track, that would have been best the pits the pits are a sloppy mess but the, the track is in perfect shape and that's what it's all about it is going to be a busy night here we do have three heats of no sprints three heats of late models then three heats also of the modifieds with soda modifieds are here and then four heats 
of the Street Stocks. Thanks so much for joining us. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Chris Sheard, Brian Sean, the four-time Northern Outlaw Sprint Association champion. The juices still get flowing, though, when you get to the track, right, Chris? Every single time. <laughs> Every single time. What do you look forward to here most tonight? I know as a track, as it continues to work in throughout the night, I think as from a sprint car standpoint, what you drove all your years is you at least want a high groove and a low groove, and then you hope for good racing that way. Yep. You always want a, a, a low groove. You want, you want a groove on the bottom so you can roll the bottom. You want a groove up on top so you can throw it up on top and let her sing upstairs. And then you want that dry slick in the middle so you can have those slide jobs. You can have a lot of passing. Um, actually, as the track slows down, better racing ensues. We'll see how it starts off here, and we will start off, I believe, with street stocks here today. They were out, had the, all the cars out here working in the track a little bit. Might take a few laps to kind of get the track worked in because of all the rain that fell. Yep. Uh, once you get the snot kind of ripped off the track, then the tackiness kind of comes out, and then better racing that way. There are some of the street stocks that are getting lined up as we get set for our first heat race of the night on the street stock side. Take a look at some of the standings here at River City Speedway for the street stocks. And there's been a bunch of them out here and that's what's been kind of cool to see. And here's what the street stocks look like. Adam Burroughs on top with Ryan Johnson. We had a chance to catch up with him in the pits just a couple of moments ago. Halverson, Richard, McNamee, Averly. It's been a pretty competitive race. No one's really running away with anything, but certainly Burroughs has been the top guy so far. So that's a look at your street stock standings coming into this, not, this evening and the 20th anniversary of River City Speedway. And here comes the first heat. As you look at Ryan Johnson in the 25 car. Again, they will go with four heats. Eight cars scheduled for this first heat race. Right now, about five of them out there. Casey Usaitis, the 2U, he is scheduled to be in this heat as well. There's a look at the 99. Beautiful looking car there, Chris. The 99, yeah, that's Josh Barker from Thompson, North Dakota. He's, uh, he's actually been racing for a couple years this year, and um, he's a front runner. He's, uh, he's actually one of my friends, and he's, uh, every time he goes out, I wish him good luck. Thompson guys got to stick together, right, Chris? Absolutely. Maybe you run a few hot laps here to kind of get the track worked in a little bit. Cars getting up to speed for the first time. Take a look at that starting grid for heat number one coming up here in just a couple of moments. Tucker Peterson and Josh Barker. Barker, of course, Chris just talked about a moment ago. On the front row, Trey Hess, John Halverson will make up row two. The three are Stephen Richards with David Barker with 7B in row three. And Casey Usatis, the 2U, and Eric Blanklands, the 539, will make up your first heat. Eight cars, eight laps in this first heat as they continue to kind of get things worked in here as a few of the cars are out taking some laps. And this isn't surprising at all, Chris, based on the fact that I don't think even track officials necessarily know what to expect and how long this track might take to work in. Yeah, typically uh, tracks like to run hot laps and that kind of works in the track. What they're doing right now is basically like a quick set of hot laps just to kind of work in the track a little bit so it's not just you know a greasy mess when you hit the green flag there is one car missing from this heat Track officials still looking for a missing car on the track right now. The 539 of Eric Blacklands, I believe, is missing from Three River Falls, Minnesota. Peterson from East Grand Forks. 
as Chris mentioned, Barker from Thompson as we'll get started here, I believe, in the next lap. Usaitis from Nome also runs quite a bit at Jamestown Speedway. And we're going to get started here with our first heat race. And we are underway here in heat number one of the street stocks. Daniel Averly is the leader. Tucker Peterson right now in second, right behind him. Closing in is Troy Hess in the four, and then James Mager in the fourth spot in the number seven. And one of the cars off the pace. That is the nine of Jason Rethemeyer. And he is going to pull it into the infield. So something wrong with the number nine machine and only six cars remaining in the seat. You see him pulling to the infield. Averly continues to lead very comfortably now by over a second. Here comes Hess trying to make a move for a second. Unable to do so. The leader that time, 16.505 seconds in that first heat. Pretty much single file around the track right now, Chris, and that's not necessarily surprising based on the way things have started with this track, with the track conditions. Yeah, once the track starts, uh, more cars get on the track, the track will actually start speeding up, and then then track will wide out, widen out a little bit, and then we'll have a little better racing. Averly continues to lead now, the margin up to two seconds. Hess now in a distant third, and certainly right now, they look like they're going to finish one, two, three, four, five with the 99 of Josh Barker, right now in fifth place. The 91 of Shane Swenson was off the pace there for a while, and then he came back onto the track. He really just about ready to put him a lap down, and he really able to do so. Here comes Averly getting ready to take the checkered flag. He is your heat number one winner on the street stocks from here at River City Speedway. Coming in second is the 27P of Tucker Peterson. Hess comes home third. And Meager into fourth with Barker in fifth. So that is how they will wind up here. That's your Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag. Daniel Averly, winner of heat race number one. We'll step aside and be back with heat race number two on the Basota Street Stocks here on Live on Midco SN. Back with heat race number two, just getting started here for the Basota Street Stocks. Ryan Johnson on the pole out to a quick lead, three wide, and they're going to throw the yellow right away. That start was all messed up. So they're going to line up and try to do it again. Trying to get them lined up here. Ryan Johnson, Braden Miller on the front row with Scott Withkowski, John Halverson set for row two, Steve Richards, David Barker row three, and then Casey Usaitis in the 2U, and Eric Blacklands in the 539 are scheduled for heat two. We have had some changes here already, so we'll see if. So the three was out there getting ready to take the green flag, but then he pulls in. There's a look at the car report. Brought to you by Home of Economy. Chris? Uh, this is Ryan Johnson, number 25 from Carlston, Minnesota. He's been racing for 11 years. He likes River Cities because it's fast-paced and has a lot of passing. He likes to keep his car loose, which might be a little tough tonight on a track like this. 
Johnson is out to the lead right now. Been a pretty good battle for second between Halverson and Miller. Halverson has the lead at the line now into second. Continue to move in position here and now Miller well off the pace was in third but he's going to be in last place almost last place coming to this last circuit. Black lands all the way up to third Witkowski in fourth in the 88. Well, slowly but surely Halverson looks like he's reining in the leader Ryan Johnson who is second in points right now at River City Speedway in the Minnesota Street Stocks. Steven Richards in the 3R also trying to make a move here on the 88 of Scott Witkowski for fourth. Johnson and Halverson well in front of the rest of the field now. Getting loose that time a little bit was Witkowski in the 88 was able to hang on to it. Casey Usaitis now making a move as he's joining that second pack. Trying to get into that fifth position held by Steven Richards. White flag is out for your leader Ryan Johnson. Alverson's got a beat on him right on his bumper. Aaron Blacklands continues to hang on to third. Wachowski giving chase. And taking the checkered flag is going to be Ryan Johnson by a half car length over Halverson. Hanging on to third is Blacklands. Wachowski into fourth. And Stephen Richards into fifth place. You say this, pretty good battle, comes up in sixth. That's the winner of your Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag. We'll be back to River City Speedway in a moment. Back with live action of heat race number three here at River City Speedway. Just underway. Zach Lee is your leader. Tiffany Norikis, the 24T, in second place right now. Double zero of Dustin Evansteiner in third. And in fourth at this time is Blake Anderson in the 9A. Larry Nebel in the 42L, bringing up fifth. Lee continues to lead. Now here comes a move on the inside by Evansteiner. Marika's trying to hang on, and now we have a yellow. Someone spun out out there in turn number three. That was the 48 of Chase Bowen. That will bring out a yellow, our first caution of the night here at River Cities. Let's take a look at your car report, brought to you by Home of Economy. The car report today is uh, Tiffany Norikis. She's from Warren, Minnesota. She started racing when she was 15 years old. She's been racing for 11 years. She's got a Krasinski chassis and a head key performance engine. Sponsors are Carlson Farms, Ricky Farms, and Moen Farms. She's currently running in second. Started on the pole and led the first lap of this race until Lee got a good run on the outside. But Evansteiner putting the pressure on here. Yes, uh, I was just going to mention that too. You, you mentioned uh, he got the pass on the outside. The track's starting to widen out. It's, it's getting a lot more racy. Green flag back underway here at River City Speedway. Lee, a really good restart. Evan Steiner trying to put the move on Norikis, who's able to hold on to second place. Her car worked really good in the turn that time, Chris. Absolutely. It, uh, I, I think it's starting to get all dialed in here, and everyone's kind of getting settled in. Anderson. Blake Anderson, the 9A, is in fourth place. Marika's just a half second behind the leader right now, Zach Lee, and everybody is pretty bunched up here in the first five cars. Like I mentioned earlier, once, once the track slows down a little bit, once it starts drying out, then the, you got more top racing, more bottom racing. It's, it's a lot less follow the leader than in the heats. White flag is out for Zach Lee. In the number three, 
Marikas is going to try to hang on to second place here over Evan Steiner, who's got a pretty good run here going into turn three. Should be a pretty good finish between those two. But Norikas will hang on to second place. Evan Steiner into third and Blake Anderson fourth. Rajon Smith, Schmidt in the 12S coming up in fifth place. That'll do it for heat race number three. We'll be back with the final heat race of the Minnesota Street Stocks after this. Back with our fourth and final heat race of the Soda Street Stocks here at River City Speedway. Turned out to be a beautiful evening out here. At the legendary bowling, just six cars in our final heat. Eight were scheduled to start. Nicholas Minsky from East Grand Forks in the 1M on the pole, and Minsky. 14th last Friday night in his results. A couple cars were scheduled to make this heat race that just aren't out here. Car report brought to you by Home of Economy, Nicholas Minsky from East Grand Forks. Uh, Nick Minsky is starting on the pole tonight. Uh, looks like he got a good jump on the start. He's running the Silver Bullet Street Stock. The best finish was actually last week this season, a 14th. Does run dirt late model as well in the 1M. That's one kind of new, unique part of him. Dustin Strand also does something similar. Runs modifieds and late models. Double duty. Keeps you busy. Absolutely. It's, that's fun. There's a look at Minsky. Who continues to pull away from everybody else. Casey Vargas into the 17 and the 18B of Adam Burroughs are battling for second place. Burroughs got a run going into turn three, and he will make the pass. Sliding in front ever so gracefully over the 17 of Vargas. J. Wayne and the X car and Riley Gregoire. The only five cars left on the track, and again, eight scheduled to start, but Larry Neval pulled off. Megan McNamee isn't out here. Greg Jose didn't make it, and then Thomas Nyhart also unable to make the call here tonight. Minsky continues to pull away from everybody, although Burroughs making some ground up. Burroughs is. I was just going to mention that it looks like he's got a lot of right rear weight in the car. The, the right rear is sitting right on the track, and and it seems to be working. He's got a lot of weight on that rear end, and, and it's going. The one thing you had mentioned to me, Chris, about this racetrack is you race here for so many years, you don't, almost don't appreciate how good of a track it is until you go to other places and see what, what other people race on. Yeah, we really have a beautiful facility here at River City. It's, the, I mean, everything from, you know, the, the track to the pits to the, the fire crew to the lighting. I mean, everything about this place is top notch. There's not a lot of tracks in the country that can compare to River City Speedway here in Grand Forks. Minsky trying to hold off Burroughs, who's really reined him in. Just two tenths of a second behind him after that last lap going into the final turn. Checkered flag coming, and Minsky will hang on for the heat race victory. Burroughs, a tight second, followed by Ferguson of the 17, the X car of TJ Wayne, and then Riley Gregoire. Your top five here in the Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag in heat race number four. We're back with your modifieds. Back here at the Bull Ring, River City Speedway, Grand Forks. Street stocks are in the books. Now time for our heat race and heat race number one for our B modifieds. Here's your Home of Economy car report. So the Home of Economy car report is Jory Berg driving the B Zero car. He's got a T and E car made by, or it's a, a J car, excuse me, by T and E with an MP engine, sponsored by Lithia Ford, Stutzman, Harley Davidson, and Sean Horn Realtor. Uh, he wants to give a shout out to the Mustache Mafia. Getting set for our first Wissota B Modified heat race of the night. There are three heat races here for the Modifieds tonight, starting on the pole will be Adam Unrah out of Winkler, Manitoba, and Brent Lofsgren from Grafton, North Dakota. And here we go. Bunched up. 
Wow, three wide, four wide going into the second turn. And how about the move that time for the 87 of Reese Stenberg? You know that guy, Chris. Absolutely. <laughs> I used to race against Reese Stenberg in a go-kart, and uh, looks like he hasn't missed a beat. Still very bunched up. And Stenberg is out to a big lead over everybody else. And again, five cars all within a couple of car lengths of one another. Right now, the 96 of Brent Lofkin trying to hang on to that second position, but Jory Berg giving him all he can handle right now. Berg might have third going to the line. He does. Don't overlook the 2S of Matt Scow as well. Scow now in to third place. Track's starting to widen out a little bit, gives drivers a couple options to pass, and, and uh, obviously it's showing. Boy, how about that? Stenberg is just cruising over everybody else. Matt Scow from McIntosh, Minnesota. Now getting into the conversation a little bit is the 10th C of Cole Howland out of Rocket, North Dakota. 10th C. Pretty good race there for second, third, and fourth. To say right now, maybe Hoagland, the 10, has the best car of those three. He can find a way by. I was going to say he's just about to run out of time. He's got one more lap to get it done. White flag is out. The number three of Adam Unra into the infield with mechanical problems. Meanwhile, the 87S of Reese Stenberg will take home the Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag. Pretty good battle for second, third, and fourth. But hanging on is Jory Burke from Grand Forks. And the number two car of Matt Scow to third. We're back to River Cities in a moment. They have just dropped the green flag here on heat race number two. Nate Reynolds, the 6R, out to the quick early lead, Randy Thompson into second place right now with the 21 of Todd Johnson running third. Tough to pass right now, Chris. Yeah, there's a lot of fast cars in the back trying to make their way to the front. Reynolds continues to lead. A couple cars got together there. Everybody able to hang on as Lance Schill now has moved all the way up to fourth. 22 of Scott looks like he has some issues with a, maybe a flat tire on that yep. left side, Chris. Looks like a flat left rear. I wonder if he'll pull it in or pull out the caution. And he will pull it into the infield, and the official's trying to get his attention to pull it in, and he didn't really do it. The green flag stays out, and now he pulls in a little bit more. You can see the tire on the 22 is all over the place. It's Scowl. Tyler Scowl, the 22S. Still leading is Nate Reynolds. Here comes the 21 of Todd Johnson into second place, and Lance Schill right behind him dives into third. Here comes the white flag, Schill into third place. Somehow sliding past the 16 of Randy Thompson. I think Schill's got one of the fastest cars on the track right now. He's just going to run out of time. Pulling away to win easily is Nate Reynolds for your Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag. Nice drive by Schill getting all the way to third, but hanging on to second that time was a 21 of Todd Johnson. The 16 of Randy Thompson will take home fourth. We're back to River City Speedway after this. Welcome back to River City Speedway in Grand Forks. Getting set for our final heat race for the Wissota. Modifieds. And there's a look at the number 32 of Eric Hoagland from Lawton, North Dakota, home of your home of economy car report, Chris. Yeah, so Eric, he hasn't run a lot yet this year, but he's had uh, a couple times he has run. He's got a couple top fives. He ran in Morton, uh, Canada, was his last race. He had a DNF, but other than that, he's been running pretty solid this year. Yeah, mostly at Devil's Lake. This is his first time at River City Speedway this season. So Hoagland on the pole for our final heat race of the Wissota Street Stocks. He will lead going 
into turn three. The 44 of Austin Hunter has made a move all the way into third place, and he is doing everything he can to get into second place as Nathan Roscoe. Now falls back to third as Hunter moves up. Car of Jeff Reed has also made a pretty good move to get up to the top four spots. But Hoblin on cruise control right now has found his groove at the bottom of the track and pretty much everybody, ooh, a couple cars get together there coming out of turn three. Oh, and there goes somebody barrel rolling down the back straight away. Oh my goodness. That is Jeff Reed in the 2R as he was battling for position in the back of the pack and there was a couple of bumps back there and then ultimately coming out of turn three there was no place for him to go and he just started toppling over my goodness what a wreck that was yeah and the the first thing you you hope for is you know the driver gets out and uh there we go we got the thumbs up that's what everybody's looking for he is okay with that thumbs up is what we're hearing, he's making contact with members of the fire crew down there, Chris, who really do a wonderful job here at River City Speedway, have for a number of years. Yeah, they do. Um, before the car was even stopped, uh, you saw one of the fire crew was already there uh, with the four-wheeler. It was just having guys that are quick like that makes the driver feel a lot, that much more safe and that much that much better. And you see him getting out of the car, that's, that's a great sign. Definitely a great sign, but the car is not looking too good as it is right now on its hood and not on its wheels that's not good chris that is never a good sign uh, you could talk to my past car owner my mom and dad and they uh at any time i would bring it to the trailer upside down they were they were none too proud of their son and there's the 11x of tanner armstrong who's also getting hooked up to a wrecker and i believe he was the one that got into the 2r of jeff reed and again, they bumped going into turns one and two, and then they kind of continued to kind of bounce off each other a little bit, and then eventually, as we take a look at the replay here. And certainly something on the 11X of Tanner Armstrong might have broke. Let's take a look here going in. Here's where they get together. Right there. And there you can kind of see the barrel roll start for the 2R of Jeff Reed as maybe something on the 11X pulled him towards the top of the track. Here's another look at it on their ISO cam. There's the two. They get into each other right there. Maybe that's where it got broken loose was when he bounced into the tires. And then, yeah, you can see that right the front right, tire the is The right front broke toast. on that first contact. And after that, you're just along for the ride. But that initial bump between Armstrong and Reed is what broke loose something on the front tire. Front suspension area. And Chris, when you can't steal your car, that's another problem. Yes, when you're it driving is. a race car. And you notice coming out of the corner, they, uh, they're they lifting their left front up. The cars are really hooked up right now, and, and everyone's trying to get one more position. And you know, one little bump, and it, that's all it takes to wreck some of these parts. There's a good look at what a modified frame looks like. Here's another look at it. Yeah, that left front's up in the air, and you just barely tap. Broke the right front there. Once he got back in the gas, the car turned right, and unfortunately, they both uh, end up on the, on the hook. Boy, how many times did he barrel roll there? At least five or six times, it looked like. People will think about that with modifieds, but these modifieds are still going significant speeds. Yes, they are. They're so when they're coming out of a turn on the throttle, Chris, they can easily bicycle up a little bit and then start tumbling. Yeah, and with the open wheels, I mean, all, all it takes, what you just saw there, all it takes is two tires touching, and then they, they, go, they go for a ride. Still getting the 2R of Reed hooked up to the wrecker. Let's go to the third member of our broadcast crew, Jody Norstead, who has an update on the track conditions down there. Jody. 
Yeah, guys, I had the opportunity to talk to a few of the race car drivers. Daniel Aberly won the first heat race for the street stocks. He said it was pretty sloppy up high. The center was kind of the place to be for the street stocks. He said he kind of got pinched down low by Tucker Peterson early, but was able to get past that. But I tell you what, Reese Stenberg, who won one of the heats here in the Modified, said this track is absolutely flying. It is so smooth. It's obviously, they haven't raced here since I think the 1st of June for the Modifies, but he said this is the best track conditions that we've had here. And uh, you can see the speed. You saw it there on the accident. I mean, this track is going to be a little bit wild tonight. All right. Thank you very much, Jody. And the one thing, I guess, Chris, that is positive about it, as fast as the track may be, it, it's smooth. And a smooth racetrack for a race car driver, that's all you're asking for, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anytime it's... Anytime it's smooth, period. It can be dry, it can be tacky. As long as it's smooth, that's that's all that a driver's looking for because it's, it's tough to hold on to one of these cars when it's smooth. I mean, add a couple bumps and it's 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 hairy. And you've taken a few tumbles here at River City Speedway over the years in a sprint car. You started driving them, I think, at 16, right? Oh, I, I started driving at 14. And yes, I've had, uh, I've had my fair share of, of upside down moments here at River Cities. And this is one of those tracks where you're, no matter what car you're driving, you're never straight. Yep. You're no, always it, getting ready for the next turn. Yep. If, if you actually look at the backstretch, like from like a Google Maps type of view or the bird's eye view, the track is almost like a D. And the only reason it's straight on the front stretch is because of the concrete wall. <laughs> if the concrete wall wasn't there, this track would be just a big circle. Well, you've heard several people call this their favorite track that they visit. Johnny Gibson, the World of Outlaws announcer, loves this track just because how racy it is. How many cars? They had 26 cars out here for the World of Outlaws feature yeah, just and, a couple of weeks ago. And 26 cars on, on a track like this, it's it, it's really not that much. You have some some tracks you put 18 cars on and it's it's two, three cars too many. So there's there's certain tracks that you can put this many cars. And you'll you'll be able to see once the features come, we'll have 24 cars in each class and and you'll you'll see that it's 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 racy all over the place. Again, this is our final heat as they're looking at the back stretch, maybe where that car dug into the speedway a little bit, into the dirt, into the mud. Sometimes that can cause some choppiness with the parts that catch. Yeah, and especially on the back stretch right where where he ended, you don't want any parts, you know, stuck in the track to blow a tire because you'll run over those parts, you'll blow a tire, and, and that's right when you're starting to enter turn three and four. And let's just say you don't want a tire to go down when you're entering a corner. Take a look at your standings here in the Midwest Modifieds here at River City Speedway. Lance Schill leads. Hunter, who's running in second right now, he's in second place there. Todd Johnson, we saw him earlier, had a good run. Matt Scow, Dietzler, Egebrant, Berg, Stenberg, who won our last heat race in the 87S, and then Tanner Armstrong, who was just involved in that accident, actually, had his front steering column. Something went wrong there as he Bounced out of turn two, and then Scott Bench bringing up the 10th spot, the 1S. So five cars remain. Hauglin has been your leader throughout in the 32. The Lawton, North Dakota native. Right on his back bumper is the 44 of Austin Hunter. Here we go. Outlook continues to lead, running in at that heart of that time was Hunter. And here comes the 39 car, Jamie Dietzler, who's among your top 10 in points, just past the 57 of Nathan Roska. Very smooth, Hunter. Not gaining any ground, not losing any ground. White flag is out, one lap to go for Hoglund, who's led every lap of this heat race. The 39 of Dietzler has been able to catch up, but is going to run out of time here. Our final heat race winner of the Wissota Modifieds is Eric Haugland of Lawton, North Dakota. Hunter comes home second with Dietzler in third.
We'll be back with your NLRA late models. There's a look at your heat winner, Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag here on Big Go SN. Your home of economy car report for this first late late model heat race, Chris. Brody Trough Ruben is number 14, 15 years old. Uh, it's his second year racing. He's had a whole bunch of top tens, and his best finish this year is second place at Devil's Lake Speedway. Back on June 9th, but Trough Ruben pretty consistent. Started third, or finished third in his heat race a week ago up in Winnipeg. Right now, it's Mike Balkin from Winnipeg who is a veteran race car driver, turned a lot of laps on this racetrack, and he is out to an early lead. I can remember Mike Balkin when I was uh, four years old, when I, and he was racing back then, running, running late models, and he actually has been running sprint cars back then, too. Balkin continues to lead. Drop through it into third. Bill Mooney is kind of battling back with Minsky for fifth. And Mooney actually won the feature during last year's race that we televised here on Fair Week at River City Speedway. But Mooney not having any of it here so far in this heat race. That's one thing I love about the late model guys. It's you, you can never have a favorite. There's there's a handful of guys that can win, but pick a guy that'll win tonight and, and they'll take 10th place tomorrow. Balkin continues to roll trough grooving, gaining a little bit. On the T1 of Tom Corcoran, as they take the checkered flag, Balkin rolls easily to the victory. Mooney coming home fifth, and Minsky in sixth. We'll take a timeout. Your Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag goes to Mike Balkin in the number 10. We'll be back in a moment. Back with your Home of Economy car report, Chris. Brad Sang in the number 12. He's from Grand Forks. He drives an MB Customs Pro Power Engine, sponsored by SNS Transport. He's actually been racing for 22 years. And when he actually raced in Super Sox, his number was X. So I asked him what, what the X was for. And he said, well, his favorite number is 12, and he didn't want to screw up his favorite number. So he picked X in case he wasn't very good in a, in a <laughs> Super Stock. Last week's winner, Dustin Strand, on the outside of him in row three. Pretty good cars in this heat with Joey Peterson, another veteran from East Grand Forks. Yeah, this is this heat's a heavy hitter heat. Bringing them to the green is Ryan Corbett and Travis Robertson. And the 11 car off the throttle immediately in the heat race. I don't know if he was even supposed to be in this heat race. And that's why they're bringing him back to yellow. I don't think the 11 car was scheduled to be out here. I think that's Shane Holden. He was supposed to be in heat race number three. And then he came zooming out. Just a little antsy to get on the track. I don't blame I guess, him. I so don't blame him. We'll do it this time around. Holden came flying on late, and the yellow came flying. So we'll try it again. Robertson in the 1R, Ryan Corbett in the 4C. We'll bring him to the green flag. Here we go. Well, they bang a little bit, Corbett and Robertson. And it's Corbett with the advantage going into turn three, but they are right on each other. Pretty good battle there as Strand has already moved into third place, and he might have the lead coming out of turn two. Boy, is he moving. Dustin Strand in the 71. Picked up the second feature win last week here at River City Speedway by three seconds over Ricky Weiss. Strand likes that high side, and it's it's fun to see two different lanes here already. Corbett continued to run low, and so far Corbett able to hold off the 71. Brad Sang has moved into fourth past Joey Peterson. Robertson still in third. Jesse Toynis way back in fifth place in the number 70 car. Corbett's really found a nice groove now in the 4C. You can tell they're using a lot of brakes in the corner. That left front locks up in that Hoosier symbol. 
the stops and you can read the tire not even moving, the left front tire. White flag is out. One more to go here for Corbett. Ryan Corbett leads Strand going into the final turn and Strand hard on the brakes coming into turn three. He will take runner up honors. Robertson coming home third, sank fourth. Joey Peterson in fifth place here in Buffalo Wild Wings. Checkered flag for Ryan Cobos in our final heat race. Our second heat race of the night. Back in a moment. Take a look at your home of economy car report for heat race number three here on the late models NLRA, and that is Troy Shill, the 11S from Thompson, North Dakota. Well, we got a couple 11s on the on the front row, but it's the outside front row, 11S and Troy Shill. Another one of those veteran drivers, been racing for 20 plus years, and uh, he's had a bunch of top 10s this year, and he's been running all right. Had his best finish of the season last week here at River City Speedway, coming home second. But no one was going to catch Dustin Strand. That just wasn't going to happen. Right now, Shill leading Holden in second. The four of Shane Eddington has been very competitive. Whoa, he splashed a little bit of water going into turn two on the tire. Might have moved the tire. Yep, might have moved that there tire in a couple inches. <laughs> so Eddington getting real tight on the turn. He had second place and trying to reel in Shill. comes the nine car of Eric Robertson from Castleton, North Dakota, trying to take over the third spot from Shane Holden in the 11 as they go into turn number two. And I think Robertson in that nine uh, is going to have third place as he tries to track down Eddington. Jill continues to cruise. Brandon Fuller in the F9 is in fifth place. Excuse me, the F9 of Brandon Fuller is in third place. And it's Eric Robertson in fifth place. Excuse me. A couple of nines out there and a couple of 11s out there. So a scorer's nightmare. White flag comes out. Schill hanging on to a very slim lead. Just .18 seconds. But in the final turn, it's Eddington passing Schill for the lead. And he will take home the Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag here in heat race number three. Schill coming home second. Nice drive for Brandon Fuller in the F9 all the way up to third. Hold in fourth and Eric Robertson from coming home in fifth. We're back for your NOSA sprints after this on Minko SN. Welcome inside the broadcast booth here from River City Speedway in Grand Forks. Brian Sean and the four-time Northern Outlaw Sprint Association Chris, champion Chris Shear here joining me <laughs> live tonight from the legendary bull ring on this final racing night here in Grand Forks of June before we move into July. And can you believe it? We're almost halfway done with the racing season, Chris. Yeah, it, uh, it, it, it flies, you know, it's your winter takes forever and your summer goes just like that. <laughs> uh, tracks out here running in the track a little bit, Chris. You noticed in turn two getting a little choppy there. Yeah, coming out of turn two, it was just a couple of eight miles were kind of bouncing a little bit. Um, so trucks are just running out here you know, knocking them down a little bit. And they're running in the top, because uh, sprint cars do like to run the top. Um, it's trying to make two different lanes, trying to make a racier track for the drivers, make a racier track for the fans. Um, nobody likes watching a follow the leader track, and the drivers especially don't like driving it. Three heat races of the NOSA sprints here tonight. Seven cars in each heat race, 21 total, so it should be a pretty good show. And the A main feature is the first heat race in terms of the cars on the track are out there right now, working things in a little bit, seven cars. On the pole of this heat race will be Nick Omdahl with Ty Hanton on the outside. Tanner Wisk and Blake Eglin will make up row two. Trevor Mell and Mark Dobmeyer in three, and then Bob Martin, the veteran in the 10 TRB, will be in the fourth row all by himself. Here's a look at Dynamite. New colors this year for Mark, forming his own race team. Taking a little while to get used to seeing him in the Buffalo Wild Wings machine, but so far, so good. He's won a lot of races here. Yeah, it's uh, new colors, same uh, same same results for, for the Team 13. Uh, about a month before the season, he found out that he's uh, he didn't have a ride this year. So he, uh, he, he 
certain things kind of fell together and all of a sudden the Buffalo Wild Wings team came up for sale and and some guys stepped up and Mark stepped up and and now he's a team owner. So Mark Dobmeyer, he's my uh, home economy car report. Um, Buffalo Wild Wings sponsor. Uh, he's been racing for, I would say 20 years and uh, he's the winningest driver in Grand Forks and I believe the winningest driver in Nosa. The one thing that Mark said it's taken a little while to get used to is all the equipment that he was used to running has changed. So just figuring out the new engine, the new chassis, all that stuff, it's, it's a different deal. He ran an Eagle chassis, now I think he's going to max him. That's a much looser chassis than what he's used to running to an Eagle, and Mark, Mark likes to drive a tight car. We all know that. Yep, and it's, I, I didn't realize that it was that big of a deal until we made a change from Schnee to J&J, &J, and it's, you can almost take your, your setup book and throw it away because it's completely different from brand to brand. And there's a guy by the name of Donnie Schatz that used to help you quite a bit when you got a J&J &J chassis, because that's what Donnie runs. Yep, and that was having a guy like Donnie. I mean, clearly he's, he's the, the best driver in a sprint car today. And having him giving you pointers, it's, it's priceless. And one car not able to make the call. And I'm trying to figure out who that is. Hanton is out there, so is Amdahl, Tanner Whisk is out there, Eglin is out there, Trevor Mell in the number one AJ is not on the track. He must be having problems, yep, he is in the pits. I did see him on the track, but something must not have been, not have been right, He's, he made his way back to the pits. And Trevor Mell from Harwood still learning, drove a 305, still trying to figure out how the 410 works, but has been excited about getting in the car, that's for sure. Green flag getting set. Hanton and Omdahl taking the green. Omdahl quickly into turn one, has the lead. Dobmeyer bounces it coming into turn one, out of turn two, hangs on to it. He's got a lot of ground to make up in the number 13, but if one guy can do it, it's Dobmeyer. Whisk into fourth, Martin into fifth. Omdahl way out in front, Hanton in second. Here comes Blake Eglin in third, and Dobmeyer still in sixth. And now Dobmeyer past Martin into fifth, and now past Whisk into fourth. Now trying to reel in Blake Eglin as Andal continues to sail away. Hanton easily into second place. These are 10 lap heats on the sprint car side, so a little more time to make up ground. Blake Eglin. Trying to hold off Dobmeyer here with a few laps left. Omdahl bounces it a little bit coming out of turn two. Omdahl leads by over two seconds. Eglin about a half second lead over Dobmeyer. Two laps to go. Here comes Dynamite. White flag is out for Omdahl, who has got it on cruise control. Eglin still continues to roll in third. Dobmeyer doesn't look like he's going to be able to make up any more ground. Martin, by the way, up to fifth. Your Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag winner is Nick Omdahl, followed by Hanton, Blake Eglin, and Mark Dobmeyer, with Bob Martin, the veteran, coming in fifth, and Tanner Wiss into sixth place. We'll be back with... Heat race number two of the NOSA Sprints. You're watching Dirt Track Racing here on Midco Sports Network. Back here at the legendary, legendary bull ring here at River City Speedway in Grand Forks, getting set for NOSA Heat Race number two. Jade Hastings and Jordan Adams will be on the front row, two youngsters. Tell you what, a couple weeks ago, Jade Hastings and Wade Nygaard in their heat race put on one of the best shows I have seen. I mean, slide job after slide job for one of the transfer positions to get into the A feature. Hastings able to get that position, able to get into the A main. Nygaard took provisional and started 26, but that was a lot of fun. I don't know if you saw that, but that was a, that was good stuff. Yeah, I uh, I actually had to watch it on uh, on the replay, but it uh, it's fun to see you know slide jobs like that. Guys going hard. To make the A main for, for a World of All-Law event, that's, that's a big deal. And, and that one position, that, that made a guy a lot of money. 
Chris Rand and Jack Croker will be on row two. Braden Pendjilly and Cale Mack in row three. And then John Sorensen in the 24 car will make up the fourth row. And there's a look at Jordan Adams, the home of economy sponsored number 20A. Your home of economy car report, Chris. So Jordan Adams, he's starting outside front row tonight. He's, he's from Reynolds, North Dakota. He's got a Kistler power plant inside a Maxim chassis. Jordan Adams still looking for his first feature win of the season, his last one coming at Jamestown last season. There's a look at your starting grid for heat race number two. As we get set to take the green flag here on our second heat race, Adams and Hastings to the line, renting right away into second, very aggressive. Adams trying to get back at Rand as Jane Hastings is pulled away from everybody. Jack Kroger into fourth, Cale Mack into fifth, Braden Pendjilly and John Sorensen. Oh, and Ranton out of the gear a little bit, and Adams makes the pass back into second. Ranton bounced a little bit coming out of turn two and got off the throttle. Adams taking advantage. Meanwhile, Jade Hastings out in front of everybody. Leads by almost two seconds over second place. Jade's car looks very, very solid on the cushion. It's, uh, it's not bouncing around like a lot of the other cars you're seeing. It's very, very stable. Great Pendulee. Almost a lap down here as Hastings comes up on her. Not an easy place to pass tonight. Not a lot of groove. Not a very wide track, Chris, and that can make it a little challenging. Yeah, and uh, Jaden made it look very easy, but trust me, it's, it's not very easy to pass when it's when it's a uh, single file and one and a half groups. Adams makes the pass of Pendjilly. He's comfortably in the second. It's almost like a hot lap session in this heat race, Chris. Checkered flag, Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag goes to Jade Hastings who rolls to the victory by nearly three seconds over Jordan Adams. Chris Ranton coming home third, Jack Croker fourth, and Cale Mack in fifth with Braden Pendjilly into sixth, and John Sorensen pulled off the track just a couple of laps in. So there's a look at your heat race winner, Jade Hastings in the number eight. We're back for the final heat race of the evening coming up next here on Midco SN. Nice crowd on hand, it ended up being a beautiful evening here in River City Speedway in Grand Forks, North Dakota for the Mid-Season Track Championship. Let's take a look at the Home of Economy car report, and that is Brendan Mullen, a youngster that is climbing into this 410 for the first time this season. Yeah, he's uh, 14 years old. He, he, he's been running mini, mini sprints or lightning sprints, and uh, his teammate Wade Nygaard, uh, him and his teammate, or him and Wade have been running this year and and uh let's just say it's it's, it's been a rookie season uh, a lot of a lot of turmoil let's call it a lot of bad luck um but it's 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 got to turn around you know at his best finish actually sunday at casino speedway coming home 11th the night before at brown county speedway did not finish took a pretty good tumble with three other cars early in that race and he actually has six different races where he has not finished the race so yeah and they, just finishing for him is, is a start there's a look at the sprint car starting grid yeah and and first they always say you know once you take a couple tumbles then you get faster so you know maybe this will just jump start his career a little bit brendan wild austin pierce in row one tom eglin and brendan mullen in two nick ranton took a pretty big tumble last friday night here at river city speedway down the front straightaway end over end in the feature race Got his car back together, he will be in row three. Jody Norstedt is pit side in the pits, track side with a special guest, Jody. Hey guys, here with Jeff Reed from Bemidji, who had that nasty spill, that barrel roll uh, in the um, heat race in the modifies. Jeff, first off, how you doing? Because that looked pretty tough. I'm all right. Uh, what did you see out there? Obviously, you set off on a barrel, kind of hard to see someone snuck up behind you, but that, that's a tough break. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh... Honestly, all you, you, you kind of just see it coming and you kind of close your eyes for a second and then, you know, it, sky dirt, sky dirt. <laughs> Anything like that ever happened to you before? 
Not for quite some time, no. I did it once a long time ago in a mini stock, but other than that, no. And you guys come back here and you go right back to work. I mean, you were working on the car and you got this thing looking kind of respectable again. Yeah, for a couple of months that uh, we get out back on it, you know, I try to get it out for the feature, but the car is bent and we're going to have to put it back on a jig and see where we go from there. Well, glad to see you up, right, Jeff? Thank you very much. All right, that's Jeff Reed. Back up to you guys. Uh, glad to hear Jeff is doing okay. That was a nasty spill. You just took a look at it. Nick ran and almost got sideways. Oh, some issues there as Tom Eglin got loose and Wren had to put on the brakes. Mullen has fallen back to six. Wade Nygaard is up to fourth. Romley makes the pass at Brendan Wild in the second. So Shane Romley in the 31 has moved up. Austin Pierce is way out by his lonesome in the lead. He's got about a half a lap advantage over the next place car. Look at Pierce go. Eglin. Holding on to that fourth spot as Rand gets chase. Now Nygaard maneuvering around Wild on the high side and into third place. Nygaard the feature winner last Friday night here at River City Speedway and with two laps to go, Dombeyer dumped it over the cushion. And talking a little bit to Mark, he said his Jacob's ladder kind of went out on him midway through the race and he finally lost it with two laps to go. Yeah, Dombeyer last week he got into that cushion and Without the Jacob slider working, the, the car just, the rear axle shoves over and tightens up, and he just went for a ride. Boy, Austin Pierce is cruising. Oh, Robway got a little sideways there, going into turn three, able to hold on to it. Wild four, Eglin fifth. Nick Granton. Trying to get past the 14 of Tom Eglin. Staying low. Checkered flag. Eglin's going to hang on as Austin Pierce comes home with the heat race victory for your Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag. And Pierce has been mighty impressive. Came from 21st all the way to second on Sunday night at Casino Speedway. Is still looking for a victory, but he's got a bunch of second and third place finishes so far this season. Nygaard coming home third, Romling in second. And that will do it for heat race number three. There's a look at Austin Pierce in the 2A. That'll do it for your heat races this evening. We'll have the B main on the street stocks coming up for you after this timeout. You're watching live dirt track racing here on Midco Sports Network. For the street stock, B main. 30 cars out here, so we have enough cars for a B-Main. It's the only class we will have a B-Main in tonight. Other than that, all the future lineups are set in the other classes. Well, let's take a look at your Home of Economy car report, and that's Casey Usatis out of Nome, North Dakota. Runs a lot in Aberdeen, up around County Speedway, also in Jamestown, at Jamestown Speedway as well. He's been a very consistent performer. Over the years, does have a second place finish at Brown County Speedway last Saturday. To look at the 2U. And we're underway with the green flag. And a couple of cars slow going out of the gates here. It's the 10 of Thomas Nyhart. And the 28, also out of the throttle. Greg Jose who had to pull it in. He was off the throttle immediately, and everybody else so far so good. Usadis leads. The top four will advance to the A feature, coming up here a little bit later tonight. Right now, those top four, Usadis, Shane Swenson, Brandon Mill, Braden Miller, and Chase Bowen are your top four. Swenson around the outside, three cars going three wide there into turn two. Sadis has certainly found a groove that he likes. Going to be very difficult, Chris, for any of the other drivers to catch the top four to advance. Yeah, I was just going to say the uh, outside of the top four, they're on the outside looking in, so they're, they're really racing hard to try to get that final transfer spot to get to the A main tonight. 
But the top four looks like they are checking out. And David Barker in the 7B is in fifth with Larry Diebel in the 42L in sixth. But a sizable difference. Almost a two-second difference between fourth and fifth right now. Ooh, and Barker got a little twisty going into turn three and four. Able to straighten it out, but Liebel able to make the pass. Meanwhile, up into second place now behind Usatis is the five of Braden Miller. And falling back to fourth, the 91 of Shane Swenson as Bowen makes the pass. Usatis coming up on a lap car. The lap car will stay out of the way. And a car slowing into turns three and four, and that is the 42 of Liebel. Let's see if he can pull it off. And the yellow does come out. Flat tire, right rear on the 42. Not sure if he took a bump from somebody. Looks, uh, I believe Liebel and uh, Barker. And Barker got together on the back stretch, and there's little, there's some debris on the back stretch as well. So even if he didn't stop, I think the caution was coming out regardless. Well, that's good news, certainly for the 7B of Barker to have a chance to maybe pass the 91 of Shane Swenson for that final transfer spot. Yeah, it was, uh, as the laps are winding on, I, I believe we only have, you know, maybe one or two laps left. He needed a caution to, to bunch everybody back up and, and give himself a chance to make it here. Meanwhile, the 2U of Usatis continues to lead. He's led from the opening lap. Miller has moved up all the way into second. Had quite a few cars actually pull off here. We started this, well, we're supposed to start this B main event with 12 cars, and right now only seven remain. Lineup is good. Track official next to us says, and we will go green this time by. Usatis will take him to the green coming out of turn four. Barker ran it hard into turns one and two, and Swenson actually made a pretty good move on Bone to get positioning, but Bone battling back. White flag is out for Usatis. Barker going to try to get past Swenson here for that final transfer spot, but he's going to run out of real estate. Usaitis home first, Miller second, Bone and Swenson will transfer to the street stock A main. Barker will come home in fifth position with the 92 of Megan McNamee in sixth and Steve Nordhagen in seventh. That's your Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag winner, Casey Usaitis out of Nome, North Dakota. It's intermission time here at the legendary Bull Ring in Grand Forks. We'll be back in just a moment before we get ready for our four main events of the evening. Back here at River City Speedway in Grand Forks, it is intermission time. They will take a look at the track, make some modifications, get some of the heavy machinery out there, some of the trucks, and try to get this to be a nice smooth racing surface for our four A main events coming up here in just a little bit on Midco Sports Network. Brian, Sean, Chris Shearick, thanks so much for joining us here on this Friday evening for the Mid-Season Track Championship at River City Speedway. And Chris, a couple of weeks ago, the World of Outlaws were here. Always fun to have those guys here, 35 cars. We're in the pits for that event, and uh, it's always a good race. Donnie Schatz won again for the sixth time in seven last seven races here at this legendary speedway, and he's a guy that I know a lot of the local drivers respect because he's helped so many drivers when they're starting out to make sure they know what they're doing. Yes, exactly. He's at the track and away from the track. He's two completely different guys. At the track, he's got one job, and that's, that's to win. And as a driver, you got to respect him for that. Away from the track or when he's not racing, he's, uh, he, he's very down to earth. He's, he's willing to help a guy out. He's ran with the NOSA guys, with our, our local group. And one night in particular, we were running Devil's Lake, and he, uh, he started in the back, worked his way all, all the way up to the front, and had problems. Fell back to like fifth, didn't take a win away from the driver. 
and then he accidentally forgot to scale. So he didn't take pay, didn't take the win away. He just did it because he loves racing. And it's, that's, that's a Donnie Schatz that I like. He helps guys out with, with tires. He'll help guys out with, with setups. He's helped me out personally with setups. And it's having a guy like Donnie Schatz, how good he is, it's, it's awesome to see just racers being racers. Yeah, and there's a number of drivers that have mentioned over the years how much he's helped them, just how to get a car going, how to get a team going, just so they know what they're doing. Jordan Adams is another guy that was really helped out by Donnie as well. Jody Norstedt actually had a chance to sit down with Donnie in his shop not that long ago. Pleased to be joined now by Donnie Schatz, a nine-time World of Outlaws sprint car champion. Inside Donnie's shop, where a lot of this, you got cars in the background, you got new stuff like this uh, buggy here that Donnie has. Uh, Donnie, you're back home for, for a stretch, uh, racing out Minot, racing out at River City Speedway. Uh, back in your home state always has to be special. But I think about some of the younger drivers that you get to meet, especially North Dakota drivers. What is that like? What, what do you tell them about your experience when they're asking you? Well, it's hard to tell anybody anything, uh, you know, about the experiences of racing with the World of Outlaws. Uh, tell you actually go do it. But uh, it is pretty neat. I remember being back in those days when I was a kid and looked up to a lot of the Outlaw guys. And, uh, you know, here we are today, uh, 25 years later from racing and uh, still enjoy coming here, still have a great time with it and uh, still eat it up. You get cheered for a lot when you're back home. Grand Forks, Minot, here in West Fargo. Uh, I'm curious to know what it's like though on the road. I mean, it, it, you've won so many races, you've won so many times. You're kind of like the New England Patriots, I guess, of, of sprint car racing. It, do you have fans that kind of like to see you lose? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. You got, you got some that are gonna like you, some that are not gonna like you. Uh, there's some that hate you. But uh, at the end of the day, we're all winners when they come to the races, and uh, we enjoy it. So uh, if, you do, if you make everybody like you, you're doing something wrong. I don't know anybody that can do that. So, um, you know, we, it, it's a sport where uh, sometimes success breeds hate, and um, it's just the nature of the beast, man. It's, uh, it doesn't deter me from doing anything. Uh, I still love doing it, and uh, that's why I'm here. 2008 was the first year that you signed on with Tony Stewart Racing. It's been about 10 years, uh, and Tony has retired since it, the last two years, retired, right? Uh, what's that been like, the, maybe the last couple of years, how that relationship has evolved for you guys? Yeah, it's, uh, this will actually be my 11th season with Tony. Um, you know, it's been a great, uh, it's been a great road. Uh, Tony's the kind of person that uh, don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness. And that's kind of he, how he's run this race team. He's, he's hired myself and, and the three guys that are on it. Uh, he lets us do our job. He doesn't uh, step on toes. Uh, we don't see him all that often. You know, he's, um, now that he's retired from, from being a full-time NASCAR driver, he's still a NASCAR owner. Uh, he still owns his team, but uh, he's more into his dirt aspirations and uh, taking his side-by-side -side out on weekends and, and certain things. So he's enjoying life and uh, it still happens to be a lot at the racetrack. For you, I, I mean, I'd imagine it's, I wanna look for different experiences. I wanna look for different challenges. The last two years, You've hopped in one of those midget cars and ran at the Chili Bowl. What has that been like in Tulsa? <laughs> it's an incredible event. Um, you know, midgets aren't really something a, a guy like me gets into. I, I've never been a very good non-wing racer. Uh, midgets are so small, uh, they're so confined. Um, when you do have something happen, and it's not if, it's when, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're gonna, you're not very comfortable in them for crashing. You know, we're very fortunate in the wing sprint car world that these cars are very safe and there's a lot of room and that wing absorbs a lot of that. So uh, yeah, it's been a great event. I enjoyed doing it, um, but it's not something that you're probably never going to see Donnie Schatz's name on the, on the Chili Bowl trophy, but uh, I'm okay with that. You know, I got my, I got my forte. I like what I do and uh, it just probably isn't something that uh, I'm going to make a, a common thing with. Well, you will see Donnie Schatz's name on the Jackson Nationals trophy. You won that earlier this month, $40,000 payday. And I know that that's a track that kind of holds a special place in your heart. You went there a lot growing up. It, how special was that victory? You know, when you go to these racetracks, um, you, know, you know, when you're from this area and you want to go race with the outlaws, you got, you know, back in the day we had Red River Valley Speedway and Grand Forks raced on Friday nights. So it was one or the other you could go to. Um, Saturday nights you had Cedar Lake Speedway and Jackson Speedway and Knoxville Raceway. Um, Sunday nights were Sioux Falls. That's kind of was the the, the weekly racing regime for me, other than when they had stuff going on during the week or specials. So um, I got a lot of laps at Jackson. I got a lot of laps at Cedar Lake, um, a lot of laps here or there. And anytime you get to go to those places, um, when you come to an outlaw show, it's pretty incredible. 
Um, anybody that hasn't been to Jackson, it, there's a lot of history there at the fairgrounds. Uh, it's been a lot of great things happen, but what they've done is taken a fairgrounds facility and they've made it a state-of-the-art uh, NASCAR facility for the fans, for the racers, for everyone. So to see somebody put that much passion and, and effort into a, a facility like that in this day of age is pretty awesome and uh, glad to be able to win that event. You're the points leader chasing a 10th title. Is that a big milestone for you, title number 10? Absolutely. Um, you know, nothing's going to be more important than that first one. I think that first one is definitely always going to sit as probably the most important one to me. But uh, you're only as good as you were yesterday. And, and our goal, just because you win a championship, uh, is only to win the next one. You know, we've got ourselves in a great position. Um, we've had a great year. Uh, we've had a little adversity. I've got a couple crew guys that we've dealt with some, some health issues and um, some injury, which is something we haven't had to deal with in the past. So i um, very proud of my guys for how they've overcome that, uh, how we've rallied together as a team and, and um, tried to get ourselves in the winner's circle a few times. And uh, Mother Nature has won more than anybody, but uh, we'll see if we can't change that by the end of the year. Donnie, appreciate the time. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Donnie Schatz, fun guy to chat with. Uh, doesn't forget where he came from, Chris. And uh, Donnie, by the way, is on the pole of his heat race down at Knoxville, Iowa. Two nights of racing at the Knoxville Raceway with the World of Outlaws. 40 cars are there. And uh, just a moment ago, um, a moment of silence for Jason Johnson, who was tragically killed less than a week ago out of Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Uh, there was a moment of silence here for Jason Johnson as well. From what I understand, they're going to, to plan to do the missing man formation here before the sprint car AMA, and they also did that last Sunday at Casino Speedway with the Nosa Sprints. Um, you drove these things, Chris. You've been in some bad wrecks. And no matter what the situation, that's always a sad deal when we lose a racer. Yeah, it's the, like the world of all that guys, they're all together. They're, they're together every day for nine months out of the year, ten months out of the year. They're family. They're competitors on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But they're family. Everybody's together. When that happens to somebody nationwide, everybody's just... Everybody gets together, and it's because it can happen to anybody, and it's it's never a good deal. No, never a good deal, and certainly our thoughts, prayers, condolences uh, with everybody with the Jason Johnson Racing, and in particular his wife Bobby, and uh, five-year-old son Jax. It's uh, just a terrible tragedy. Jason's a tremendous guy. I've had a chance to speak with him on a couple different occasions. He's a classic individual, and uh, certainly appreciated um, his professionalism as well to all the fans and certain media members and everybody else out there uh, that were race fans throughout the year. So. Very sorry for his loss as the World of Outlaws get back in action tonight at Knoxville Raceway in Iowa. We're back here at River City Speedway in just a moment. Stay with us. Much more action to come from the legendary bullring here in Grand Forks. Back here in Grand Forks, North Dakota at the legendary River City Speedway. They continue to pack down the track with some of the heavy machinery and push trucks out here tonight. Again, a whole bunch of rain fell here in the north part of Grand Forks. Severe weather thunderstorms in the area, some tornado warnings throughout the area, up and down the Red River Valley. And uh, kudos to all the track officials that were able to get this track ready to go here tonight. Chris, it's not an easy situation on a high bank track the way this is to try to work out the water in particular in the pits. Yeah, it's, like I mentioned earlier, the, the track is, it's actually in very decent shape. It's, it's in very, very good shape. It's smooth. You know, respectively, it's smooth. There's a couple bumps here and there, but it's, as a driver, that's not. That's nothing. Well, one of the tougher parts, Chris, as a sprint car driver, is not always running towards the front. And that's what a lot of the guys want to do when they start, or gals, when they start racing. Always want to be on the front, but that doesn't happen right away. It takes a little bit of time, takes experience, Takes a little bit of money, as you well know as well. This is not a cheap hobby no, that a lot time. of these drivers have. Braden Pendulee is a small-town North Dakota girl, 19 years old, from way out in Langdon. It's a family race team. She's been racing for about six years, just her, I think, her third or fourth year now in a sprint car. Yep. She seems to be getting better and better each week. But that's one of those things where it just takes a little time. Yeah, and it's all it is is seat time. I mean, you can, you can spend as much money as you want at this game, and if you only race once a month, you're not going to get any better. You can spend very little money at this game and race every single day, which costs money, uh, and you'll just get better. It's, it's all seat time. Well, 
Braden Pendjilly is uh, one of those 19-year-olds that is a CNI by day and a race car driver by night and on the weekends. And our Marty Mueller had a chance to catch up with her. A bright pink number 12 stuck to the side of a 410 Outlaw Sprint car wing. That's a sight Braden Pengilly has been dreaming of for a long time. I've always wanted to race sprint cars. It's always been my dream. I started racing go-karts when I was seven, and that was my goal is to become a sprint car racer. The go-kart would hold Braden over for a while before moving to a lightning sprint car. And then one day, with the help of her family, it was time. While most of us are learning to parallel park, Braden, at just 16 years old, was cinching down the belts behind the wheel of her first sprint car. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a really big adrenaline rush, and they're really fun, really fast, and it's like a big family out here at the track. Oh, it's real enjoyable seeing her progress through the years and working on getting better and better, and Braden really enjoys it, and we enjoy watching her do it, and it's, it's a fun family deal. They do it for the sheer enjoyment, no doubt, but the time commitment, balancing work, racing, and everything else in a 19-year-old's life, that can be grueling. It can be long. I go to work at 6 in the morning, get off at 2.30, and the days I race, we leave right after work, and then some days we get home at 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm up for work at 5 o'clock, going to work and then doing it all again. So you get, you get exhausted, you get tired, you just want to take a break, but you know you can't. The Pengillies trade sleep for time at the Speedway. But Braden and everyone else here will tell you, they couldn't live their frenzied racing lives without the support of those at home. My family takes me every weekend, so that's a big help. They've been doing it for 12 years now, so I guess I've taken my mom's summers away for 12 years. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a little hectic, but yeah, I'd say it's hard to describe it, but it's, it's good quality family time. We're always in the garage together working on the car. He, he's pushed me to do my best on my car, and we've learned sprint cars together. I mean, none of us knew how to work on a sprint car before, so we, it's, it's all a learning, learning curve for us. In just 12 short years, Braden has gone from rookie go-kart driver to an outlaw sprint car regular at one of the best dirt tracks in the country. I think it's pretty cool. A lot of people come up to me and they don't really know what to say when they see it's a girl behind the wheel. Um, then I'll, I get a lot of credit for being the only girl out here. Um, a lot of little kids come up and say they want to be like me. They love my car because it's pink and got a lot of fans. As she lives her dream, Braden inspires young race fans to chase theirs. It's safe to say the bright pink number 12 is here to stay. Well, let's look at Braden Pendjilly and nice young lady. That's always good to see, Chris. Yeah, it's, it's always fun to see, you know, guys and girls. You have the young kids coming up, like she said, you know, idolizing her and, and wanting to be her. It, it's, it's fun to have younger people in the game and it's fun to see you know, women and men in the game. Well, we'll see Braden in our A feature on the sprint car side here coming up in just a little bit. But first, we got three other main events to get to, starting with our street stock A feature. That's coming up next. Welcome back to River City Speedway in Grand Forks. It is time for our Wasota Street Stocks. A feature, 24 cars slated to start as we take a look at the Home of Economy car report for the 88 of Scott Wachowski. Scott Wachowski is actually from Aberdeen, South Dakota. He made his trek all the way up here. It's his first time at River City Speedway. Uh, he's running an MC2 chassis with a Chubbs engine, Dakota dirt and pipe, Aberdeen area radiator, a rotor repair as his sponsors. Seen a few cars come up here from both Manitoba, down from Manitoba, and up from South Dakota. That's always good to see. Yeah, good field of cars tonight. Uh, you said there was 30 cars? 30 cars, I believe, started the evening. Or was it 30, excuse me, it was actually more than that. It was like 32 ended up being in the field. 24 on this main event. Very healthy car count either way. It, uh, it's good to see that. 
and again, the street stocks, the late models, a lot of these cars have just, a lot of these series have not had a chance to run here because there's been so many rainouts. In the nights there haven't been rainouts, there's been specialty events such as the World of Outlaws or Fair Week when they're not racing here. So for a lot of these riders, they just haven't had, been able to get on the track very much here in the last month. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's tail of the tape, I guess. You uh, you try not to have a lot of rainouts during the year, but it's Mother Mother Nature's the only one that can predict that, and ultimately, it's uh, you're playing the waiting game with her. Trying to get them all stacked up here for the feature event. Four cars are out there, so everybody making the call for this A feature. And they're getting the signal for one more lap, so next time by, we will go to green. Adam Burroughs, Ryan Johnson on the front row. John Halverson, Zach Lee, Daniel Averly, he raced number one winner, starting on the inside of row three with Tucker Peterson, Nicholas Minsky, and Tiffany Norikis will start on row four. Here we go. Green flag getting set to come out for our Wissota Street Stock. A feature here on Midco SN. The 18B of Burroughs leads. Everybody stays clean coming out of turns one and two as we head to try to finish one lap of action here. Boy, they are three, four wide in some parts on the track right now. One in the books. Burroughs continues to roll. Johnson in second. Averly all the way up to third place. And he's looking to take over the second position from Johnson. Averly from Finley, North Dakota. Burroughs from West Fargo in the ATP. Racing in the back of the pack as well. Another man on the move is Zach Lee in the number three car, holding on to that fourth spot. 35 of John Halverson started third. He is sitting fifth. Minsky has moved his way into seventh position. Everybody's still kind of sticking to the bottom of the racetrack, Chris. There's still plenty of moisture down there. Yeah, it was uh, at the start of the race, there was three, four wide. Uh, everyone's trying to get to the bottom, and the bottom right now is the fastest way around the track. And, and uh, you know, there's, I mean, there's still two, three wide, which is pretty remarkable. Still a good battle for second place between Johnson and Averly. Barely hanging on to the fourth position as the 35 of John Halverson tries to get a position back. The 27B of Tucker Peterson is sitting in sixth. Well, they're really not reeling in the 18B of Burroughs. He's still got a big lead on the rest of the field. Yeah, he's got it on cruise control right now. Boy, the 91 out of shape there. Shane Swenson got real high on the racetrack, and he's still real high on the racetrack. Something must be broken on that car. Yeah, it looks like a flat right in front, and he, uh, he just pulled it into the pits. Swenson off the track. He'll stay green. Burrow still has not been able to catch lap traffic, but it's not that far away. I'm sure Johnson, along with Averly, hoping for a caution here at some point to bunch the field back up. Burrow's right rear is just planted to that racetrack. He's got a lot of right rear drive in that car right now. So whatever setup he went with, likely with the shocks, it's sticking down, Chris. Yep, that, uh, he, he had very similar in the heat. I, I remember the, uh, that right rear sticking to the track, and it's, clearly it's working. Burroughs has a lot of lap cars in front of him, so he's going to have his work cut out for him trying to pass those cars. A little bit of a bobble coming out of four that time. 25 of Johnson. He's been racing 11 years. 
hoping that those lap cars and that lap traffic will give him a little bit of time to make up some ground, but he's running out of laps. It might be a double-edged sword, but I, I think Burroughs is looking for a caution right now. 24 T of Tiffany Arikis on the outside, and now, oh, there's a car getting loose in front of the leader. That was the double zero of Dustin Evansteiner as Burroughs makes the pass of Narikis. And now Johnson's going to have some work to do. And Burroughs able to get past a couple of more cars, including the 99 of Josh Parker. Lead still about a second and a half for Burroughs. And there it is, the Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag goes to Adam Burroughs. No caution, he leads wire to wire, winning this race easily over the rest of the field, making it look easy. Johnson coming home second, Averly into third. And congratulations to Adam Burroughs for taking home the checkered flag here tonight from West Fargo in the 18B. No cautions, he just had it on cruise control, Chris. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the most nerve-wracking races when it goes green to checker because you don't want to make any mistakes, but it's, uh, it's also one of the easiest because on cautions, all you do is think about things too much, and sometimes it's easier just to, just to go green to checker. So parking in victory lane is Adam Burroughs. Climb out of the car and celebrate with the fans here in attendance. Nice crowd coming out here tonight. Again, about 10 hours ago, Chris, we weren't exactly sure where we stood. A lot of water on the track from heavy rains last night, so certainly good to see everybody come out and support the races here this evening. And hats off to the to the track crew with, with the limited amount of time that they had to put this track together and get the pits together. This track turned out phenomenal. This is a really nice track tonight. It's a fast track, and again, they'll get the machinery and the push trucks back out here, the tractors, to try to pack it down. And here's a look at the start with Burroughs starting on the pole. On the outside of him was Ryan Johnson, and Burroughs kind of got that momentum, was able to get in his drive line, and. Looks very comfortable throughout. Did not make any mistakes or very few mistakes. And just did not give that opening to Ryan Johnson to really reel him in. And there he is taking home the Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag. Our own Jody Norstead will get a chance to catch up with Burroughs here in just a moment. Still plenty of moisture on the track, Chris, and it'll be interesting to see if by the time the sprint cars get on the track, if it does indeed widen out a little bit, because what we know is that Mark Dobmeyer and Chris Ranton will be on the front row with the inversion, and the one place you do not want to see the 13 of Mark Dobmeyer is on the front row. It's hard enough to beat that guy the way it is when he starts in the back of the pack. Yeah, even, even with, you know, the 13 up front, regardless of who's up front, tracks like Grand Forks and River City Speedway, they're different than your, like your Knoxville. In Knoxville, you could start up front, never pass a car all night, and you can win. Grand Forks, you could start up front. Yeah, you might start first and you finish first, but you pass about 20 or 30 lap cars in 25 laps, so you're still passing cars. Jody Norstedt is now standing by with the winners of your Wasota Street Stocks. A feature, Jody. Yeah, Adam Burroughs, the points leader here at River City Speedway. Uh, what were the track conditions out there like first off? Was it pretty crucial to get out in front and start on the pole? Well, absolutely, especially on a track like this it is. Uh, you know, we got a lot of rain last night. I, looking at the radar, I personally didn't think we were going to be able to race yeah. today. So that being said, yes, it is extremely hammered out and it is very fast. So 
I think uh, anybody who, you know, I race with a lot of really good, good competitors. So anybody who started where I did probably could have won the race. So how about in the heat race? Did it ch did much change at all in between intermission getting the sprints and late models out there? You know, it actually didn't change a whole lot. I thought it was a little bit smoother, to be honest with you. Um, I was in the fourth heat, so I was fairly lucky. The guys before me in the first couple of heats, it was awfully, awfully slimy. But uh, from my heat to now, it really hasn't changed a lot. So I think as the features go on here tonight, you're going to see some really fast racing and late models in the sprint cars. It's going to be insane. Now, you know we're doing this on TV. You didn't give us much drama in that first race. <laughs> I know. Should have told me that. I maybe could have spiced it up a little bit going through lap traffic there. <laughs> Congratulations, Adam. Thank you. Adam Burroughs, your feature winner here in the street stock division. Brian? <laughs> hey, we'll take anyone, any driver that wants to spice it up. We'll take it as long as you keep it safe. Congratulations to Adam Burroughs on the Minnesota Street Stocks victory, your points leader here at River City Speedway. We're back to the legendary bullring after this. This race on Midco Sports Network is presented by Home of Economy and Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back to River City Speedway as they get the Wasoda Modifieds on the track for their main event here this evening. The fun first race. Congratulations to Adam Burroughs who ran away from everybody. Man, he had it working. So the Home of Economy car reports on Matt Scow, the number two S from McIntosh, Minnesota. He's got a Millennium chassis and a Ford engine. I asked him what, who makes the Ford or who, who makes your engine? He goes, you know what? I don't know, but it's sponsored by Luckin Motorsports. And Lynn Luckin is actually at home watching on TV right now because he's battling cancer. So I wish him the best. Take a look at our starting grid. Row one, Lance Schill, Austin Hunter, two very fast cars in their heats. Scow and Johnson in row two. Dietzler and Bojori Borg in row three. Stenberg won his heat race easily. He will start the inside of row in four with Nate Reynolds. Cole Haugland, Eric Haugland, the two Hauglands on row five. Row six is Randy Thompson and Nathan Rosaka. Brent Lofgren, Tim Berg, Logan Bauer, Scott Vasacek, Jeremy Lazowski, and Jaden Varnson, Adam Unra, and Jeff Reed, who took a terrible spill in his heat race. Barrel rolled six or seven times. Do not see if he got the car put back together or not. He did, wow. I do not see him out there right now in the two. And we are set to go with the start of our feature. Here we go green, Shill and Hunter. Whoa, we got a car getting sideways and up on the side and a caution, I believe, is going to come out here. Are they going to keep it going? Yep, they're going to bring out the caution. Do it all over again. Shill and Hunter on the front row. Yeah, Todd Johnson just went in the corner a yeah, little, Johnson little hot sideways. and heavy, and car got a little too tight. And yeah. Jory Berg have nowhere to go, and. Unfortunately, he, he might have got the worst worst of that crash. Another look at it. Really good job keeping that thing on all four wheels. That uh, that was that was over 45 degrees there. 
Let it get any more serious than that as they take a look at the 21 of Johnson. And it looks like his right rear is flat. That could have been the reason why he, why he uh, got it up on two wheels that the rim dug in. And looks like a broken shock down there. Well, tires certainly low, no question about that either. Lined up, go do it again. A couple of cars coming off. Yeah, there's a couple of cars that are a mess. So we've got a car hanging out up there. Play. Boy, that was dangerous. That didn't go barrel rolling off the edge of the banking there, Chris. Yeah, he did a, he did a stand-up job keeping that thing on all fours. Johnson from Petersburg, North Dakota. And Schill and Hunter will take you to green. Don't look past Jamie Dietzler from Laramore in the 39. He climbed up a couple of spots in his heat race. Pretty good shot of the inner workings on that B0 car of Jory Berg. Yeah, Jory Berg on the out, some damage certainly on the outside of that race car. See if he can make that work. Kind of see some sheet metal hanging out. How much of a difference does that make, Chris, on one of these modifieds? To tell you the truth, I am not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> As a driver, I know when when parts of my car, cosmetic parts of my car were messed up. It was more of a mental thing. Um, right now, in my head, I'd be thinking, you know, is anything else broke that I can't feel? When you go into that first corner and something breaks, you don't really know, but yet you can't take it, you know, you can't take it easy. You gotta go hard. So it's a little nerve wracking. The first corner is gonna be a little, little sketchy for him. It looks like they're giving the uh, uh, 21 of Todd Johnson a little bit of time to replace a wheel or a right rear. And it actually looks like he's heading back onto the track, so. And that gives the cars a couple of opportunities too to drive around and continue to maybe pack down the track a little bit, Chris. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure the track officials, track officials were okay with a couple extra laps packing it in too. So here comes Johnson. He'll have his work cut out for him now, yeah. starting to start the tail end. Yeah. It's the one negative. Have to start 21st on the grid instead of in the top three rows. So here we go, green this time by. Shill Hunter will bring them to green. Dylan Hunter side by side down the back straightaway. Look out for that 2S of Matt Scow, who's now up to third place. Dietzler fourth. And the 87 of Reese Stenberg is into fifth place. Hunter has taken over the lead going into turn one. Scow also trying to get past Schill. Uh, 
Weber giving Dietzler a pretty good run there for fourth. Johnson has passed four cars from the back of the pack already. It looks like he's going to try to get past a couple more. To possibly at least try to get a top 10 finish. He does have about 16, 15 laps left to do so. Hunter continues to lead. Schill has kind of settled into a nice pattern. Six R of Nate Reynolds is up a couple of spots. He started eighth, he's up to sixth. And we do have a caution on the speedway. Looks like there's debris up in three and four. Debris cautions are never fun, but as a driver, we appreciate them. Yeah, saves you some money, possibly. Saves, saves you a lot of money. You and I were both scouring over the track, looking to see if there was a car spun out or off the banking somewhere, but it is debris. And again, quite a bit of debris was hanging off the Jory Bird car as well. Jody Norstedt continues to work. Tracks out. He's in the pits. Has an update for us, Jody. Yeah, guys, a little bit of prep, I guess, for the, the sprint car showdown here later tonight in the feature. Spoke with both Wade Nygaard and Mark Dahmeyer. Both those guys described the track as rough and fast. And Wade Nygaard actually said it was too fast for an old guy like me. As for Dahmeyer, he said it's it's going to be interesting. He'd like to see them kind of widen the track. I know you guys have talked about that a little bit too. Widen the track so there are more passing lanes for the feature. I don't know if that's going to happen tonight. It, it might end up for some, some tight racing tonight in the features. All right. Thanks so much, Jody. And that, that's certainly a possibility, Chris. And again, that's nothing anybody here can really control. When there's this much moisture falls on the track, you can only work it in so much. But there's still a lot of laps that have to be run, run between the late models and the sprint car, so you never know, maybe by sprint car time, maybe it will widen out to a couple of lanes. Yeah, that's, I mean, you can always hope that. It's, like you said, it's it's anybody's guess at how much rain actually fell on the track. Uh, it's, it's, you know, the track officials are, or the, the, yeah, the track officials are doing what they can to make the track wider. Any, ch any chance they get, they're running trucks out there to widen out the track. They're trying to make this as racy as they can. And what we have seen so far, Chris, is that if you're starting towards the front, you have a great chance of staying at the front because it's been extremely difficult to pass. Yes, it has. It's right right now. Drawing that number one is going to be going to be a, a godsend for you if you if you do have problems and you have to go to the back. It's going to be dang near impossible to get all the way back up front. Here's a look at Austin Hunter from Winnipeg, Manitoba, and continuing to work on that Jory Burke machine. So much sheet metal hanging off of it. See if track officials allow him to continue or if they continue to rip it off. But that isn't safe, Chris. I mean, that could come flying off and go through somebody's, you know, right through their line of sight, possibly into their car. Yeah, it's it's one thing to go through a driver or to go through another car. It's another thing to go to fly up into the stands. It's something light like tin like that. It could end up in the stands. And, and nobody wants to see a fan that just comes out for fun on a Friday night, you know, get injured. Looks like the official that was down there and the track kind of tucked the sheet metal into one of the other parts of the frame. So might be more workable now for Jory Berg. Twelve laps left here on our Wasoda modified feature and Berg will just take it, I believe, to the pits. That's it. Hunter leads, Schill in second place, Scow into third place. Stenberg and Dietzler make up row three as we are set to go for our restart, 12 to go for our Wasota Modified feature events. Hunter to the green, good start for the 44. Scow into second place.
see if Hunter can hold on here. Shill to the high side, Scout to the low side, and now Shill bounces way outside. Dietzler also looking to get past Shill for third, but Hunter continues to lead. Comes Stenberg, putting his nose right on the bumper of the 39 of Jamie Dietzler. There's Hunter, Scow still within striking distance. Chill hanging on to third, but a little bit of distance now between the top two cars and the third place car. Chris, you're in a situation right now, there's not a lot you can do except hope for lap traffic to maybe pick him off here at the end. Yeah, that's all you're really hoping for is lap traffic and then hope the leader picks the wrong move and as of second you go wherever the leader doesn't. Hunter from Winnipeg. Continues to lead. It was another Canadian that won last year here on the late model side in Bill Mooney. It's Hunter scoots by at one lapped car and going to try to get another one. It's the 23 of Scott Vasacek slides by on the low side. Bumps Vasacek out of the way. Scow able to gain a little bit of ground there. Lap cars are being pretty generous going, going to the high side, letting the leaders letting the leaders race. Still leads by about a half second over Scow. One more lap car in the way, and that's the 96L of Jeremy Lizakowski. He lets Hunter by. Scow also by on the low side. Checkered flag is out, and Hunter is your victor here in the Wasota Modifieds, taking home the victory, your Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag. Hunter won up in Winnipeg last night after starting fourth. He's not run a lot at River City Speedway here, also has a victory at Greenbush last Saturday evening, so three wins now in the last six days for the 44 of Austin Hunter. climb out of the car with the checkered flag and again the tractors the water trucks and the push trucks will all make their way back on the speedway to try to pack this thing down tough part with uh, with you know sun going down typically when the sun goes down the moisture starts to come back up out of the track so they're kind of fighting that a little bit too. You know, it's the track's already wet, and then now when the sun's going down, the uh, moisture's coming out of the track. That's quite the helmet for Austin Hunter. Was that a, some sort of gorilla back there or something? Young man out of Winnipeg. Three wins in the last week. Take a look at the pass by Hunter. Getting past Schill. Not a lot of room to maneuver there. And again, on the high side of the track, a yeah, little bounce there from Schill was able to get past. And Scow able to get past Schill as well. But Scow, the lead was always about a half second. He was never able to get up any closer than that. Hunter comes up with the victory in his first race of the season here at River City Speedway.
Chris. I saw Chris is better than him that works. Hey, how about that? Austin Hunter, he is back at Rydell Car. Big Green Lake. Take your spot. And I don't believe it, Chris, but I believe there's some rain falling on the track. Am I missing that? Unfortunately, it does look like that. Does it look like it a little bit? Or am I wrong in assuming that? It is raining out there. Oh, boy. Jody Norstead is also standing by with Austin Hunter, our victor here tonight. Jody. Some refreshing raindrops, Austin, after that race. Uh, you looked red hot out there, obviously. Uh, you dodged a little bit of a bullet there on this opening lap, a little bit of crash there in turn one and two. Uh, but it seemed like smooth sailing for you uh, the rest of the way. Yeah, we got luck. We, it was good. We, we've we been running good here all year, and just the way the draw worked today, we got to start outside front row, and it definitely helps on a track like this, but we got Dustin and Brian got this Millennium chassis tuned so good that anybody could drive it. You had some good drivers chasing you down. Once you hit lap traffic, kind of what was your strategy? I was just hoping they would stay in their line and we would just find their way around them. As long as they weren't all over the track, we would work around them. Three wins in six days. Do I have that right? You've been rolling pretty well. What's going well for you right now? Yeah, it's been going really good. Uh, we wrecked this car in Winnipeg like two, three weeks ago and we left it down here at Millennium. and. I was a little bit worried it wouldn't come back the same, but I think it's come back even stronger. All right. Well, congratulations, Austin. Thank you. Good luck the rest of the way. Austin Hunter, your modified winner tonight. Brian? All right. Thanks so much, Jody. Let's hope the raindrops stay away so we can get our final two features in. The late models and sprint cars are still scheduled to come. We will see what happens with the weather here in Grand Forks. We'll step aside and be back with more. From the legendary Bull Ring in Grand Forks, North Dakota on Midco SN. Still a few raindrops falling here in Grand Forks as we are hopeful to get on our final two races of the evening. The NLRA late models are on the track, along with push trucks, tractors, the water truck. As we look at the 7P of Joey Peterson, or your home of economy car reports. So Joey Peterson's from East Grand Forks. He's been racing for 28 years. He actually started at the age of 14 in Outlaw Streets in Hallock. In his sixth race of the year, when he was 14, he actually won. That was the week that he turned 15, he won his first race. Boy, it's hard to believe that Joey Peterson, as long as he's been racing, and now has a daughter, Kelsey, that is racing. And she actually won our feature last year on our televised race during the fair in a lightning sprint. Yes, yes. Uh, Joey, it, it, it's always fun to see, you know, you know, brothers racing, or brother and sister, or sisters racing, dads racing. Dad and daughter race. It's always fun to see that family aspect of racing. Let's take a look at your starting lineup for the late models here this evening. 17 cars on the grid to start things off. Ryan Corbett, Mike Balkin. Two uh, heat, row, uh, heat race winners are on the front row with Shane Eddington, who had a very impressive drive to win his heat race as well, along with Troy Schill in the 11S. Tom Corker and Dustin Strand will make up row three. Brody Trofgrub in the youngster with Travis Robertson in row four. The F9 of Brandon Fuller moved up a few spots in his heat race as well. He's on the inside of row five with Kevin Robertson to the outside of him. Row six has the veteran Brad Seng, along with the 11 of Shane Holden. Joey Peterson and Bill Mooney have some Ground to make up, starting in the seventh row with Nicholas Miski, Eric Robertson, and Jesse Toynis will make up your 17 car feature event here for the late models. And they continue to drive on the track, trying to work this water in that has fallen here. And the, the rain has certainly slowed, Chris, from what we saw just a moment ago. And we hope this is just a passing shower here in Grand Forks. The, track certainly has a moisture the way it is yeah and it's this little bit of rain that we did get it's I mean it's certainly gonna make the track you know faster but it, it's just slime on top give a couple laps and these late models will blow it all off and it'll be back to back to the way that it was at the end of the uh, Midwest body or feature how much rain is too much rain Chris I mean I know it depends on the track but it 
you'd almost rather have a light rain for a half hour instead of a downpour for 10 minutes because once you get the track that flooded, it gets really tough to work it back in. Yeah, it's, well, a light rain for half hour is never good either. It's, you know, six of one, half dozen of another. It's obviously, you know, having no rain would be best. But <laughs> this, this little shot that we got, you know, it was not even five minutes, you know, two, three minute rain shower. That was, that's nothing. So far, our feature winners have come from the front row. So if you're on the front row, I have to say your odds are pretty decent of at least having a chance to win the race. Yeah, as long as you can stay out of trouble, you know, it's stay out of trouble, keep the front end of the car clean, and you have a lot better shot at winning than the guy starting in 10th. <laughs> and again, they'll maybe give him a few hot laps here to try to blow some of that moisture off the track. Here's a look at your River City Speedway late model standings, Dustin Strand. A three-point lead over Mike Balkin, the other veteran, Brad Seng, Ryan Corbett into fourth, Bill Mooney fifth. Followed by Peterson, Robertson, the youngster, Troth Rubin, Troy Schill, and Nicholas Minsky. Those are your top ten here in point standings at River City Speedway. How about River City Speedway? Now celebrating its 20th anniversary as River City Speedway. Of course, it was the Grand Forks Fair Speedway for a while. But uh, since they reshaped this track and really made it what it is, Chris, that's when I think it's really gained its notoriety. Yeah, it's it's called the bull ring for a reason. There's, there, I always I always uh, said it was, if you take 24 fighter jets, you put them inside a the gymnasium, and you light a match and you let them go. <laughs> that's what it's like racing on on the bull ring. It's there's cars up on top, there's cars up on the bottom, and the way the track's configured, it's progressive banking, so it's flat on the bottom and it progressively gets more and more banking up towards the top of the track. The back stretch is, is highly banked, so you can really get a lot of speed and momentum going into three and four, and it's, it provides a lot of exciting last lap, last corner passes. Continue to work in the track a little bit here at River City Speedway, the cars with the wide tires, hopefully all 17 of them can get the surface racing again, and it appears they're almost there. Corbett and Balkin on the front row. Eddington with Schill in row two. And then one guy that's always a threat, no matter where he starts, is Dustin Strand. He will start in the inside of row three. One here last week. Here's the rest of the schedule for the NLRA. Late models at the Greenbush Race Park, and then to Jamestown, and then up to Minot, and then up to Canada before they come back to River City Speedway here on the 17th of August. That also happens to be the next time the World of Outlaws are in town on the sprint car side. And then they will head down the Red River Valley Speedway when the World of Outlaws go to Red River Valley Speedway in Fargo before. Wrapping up a couple more races at Viking Speedway in early September, and then finally at River City Speedway here on September 6th. And I always thought that is such a great support class for the World of Outlaws. When you bring the NLRA late models, you'd see really good racing all night long. Yes, it's when you have sprint cars and late models, nothing better. Balkan and Corbett to the green flag. Here we go. Boy, they are catching grip and firing like a rocket out of turn two. Balk into the inside. Corbett still has the lead. Strand all the way up into fourth. He's looking to pick it by Eddington. This track is crazy fast. They are motoring. Balk in as Corbett got out of shape a little bit there coming out of turn four, and Balkin takes advantage. He has the lead. Strand to the high side, trying to still get past Eddington. Strand throws it hard into turn one. Coming out of turn two, he's got third place. Now looking to get past Corbett. And Strand bobbles a little bit. Corbett continues for second, but here comes Strand. Strand into second place. His sight set on Balkan. Schill has dropped back to fifth. Travis Robertson has moved up the field a little bit. Brad Singh has moved up the field a little bit.
Strand to the high side. Balk into the low side. Strand is your new leader. Dustin Strand is flying all around this racetrack. Boy, he's opened up a big lead. He's the fastest car on the track, and there's no one even close. Looks like there's a little hole starting in the bottom of one and two, and Strand is the only car that's running above that hole. Everybody else is bouncing through it. So Strand continues to lead. The lead now, upwards of two seconds as Strand comes up on a lap car. Corbin continues to battle with Balkan for second. Now Balkan is going to try that high side to see if his car can work up there. Tom Corcoran in the T1. Continues to work through. And he got behind Schill, and Schill goes bouncing into the infield, and he slides to a stop. Dustin Strand has about a half a lap lead as we hit the yellow. And Schill. Schill looks sure. to be done. Not sure if something was wrong with the car, but it just looked like it wasn't steering coming down the straightaway. And then it looked like the car slowed, and then he just kind of skidded to a stop. And he's telling official behind him, look, bring me in, I'm done. <laughs> Meanwhile, Donnie Schatz is doing what Donnie Schatz does. He dominated the dash and will start on the pole of his, you know, they should just call that place Shotsville, <laughs> the Shotsville Raceway. You know, they, they, actually the last time they had banners called Donnie Shotsville, <laughs> or, uh, or Knoxville was, yeah, Donnie Shotsville, was uh, the year that Jason Johnson won the Knoxville Nationals. <laughs> and that was an epic race. That was an awesome race. That I think Jason Johnson, more than anything else, will ever be known for was that race with with Donnie Schatz, that is maybe the best race between two cars at the front of the pack I've ever seen. Yeah, it's just incredible. For 50 laps, those guys just went elbow, tooth and nails. Elbow to elbow, that, that was fun. So there's a look at Eddington and Balkan. Now watch Shill just kind of come skidding into your picture. Right there. will remain in the infield. You can see the marks there. I mean, he's, he's slid for a long time with that wet grass. Yep. It's a good thing he didn't continue and go all the way back onto the racing surface. Thirteen laps remain here in our A feature for the NLRA late models. Dustin Strand has been dominant. We'll see if the rest of the field gets a chance at him here in the last 13 laps. But he has been blowing the doors off everybody. When that caution came out, the lead was about a half a lap. 71 will take him to green. Orbit a little bit of sideways on that restart. Oh, and there goes oh. the 10, flying over. Oh, we got a car upside and down. And a car is upside down, going into turn number two. And that will bring out the red flag. And I believe, was that the 70 of Jesse Tunis? Or was that Bill Mooney in the two? That's that Bill Mooney in the two that got upside down. The other car involved was Shane Holden. A few different people there trying to help get this car back on all fours. And 
And Mooney's tire is flat. Certainly has some damage in other areas as well, Chris. Yeah, look, it looks like Mooney's moving around on the inside. Once again, that's that's priority number one. Make sure he's all right. The uh, you, you you saw the the fire crew was right on the scene though with the four wheeler. It's like I mentioned earlier. These 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 guys, they're top notch. These fire guys. The caution kind of started when the ten of Scott Robertson, something broke and he just went right off the banking and into the pits. And then at the tail end. Mooney got tangled up with Shane Holden. And what could have happened there was like a little domino effect, you know, maybe uh, we all the drivers have race receivers in, they have a headphone. So when the, the track officials say yellow flag, everybody knows to slow down. And sometimes one driver slows down a little quicker than the other. And it could have happened there where the driver in front of Bill Mooney slowed down a little too soon. And they tagged and all of a sudden Bill Mooney's upside down. Let's go to Jody Norstad, Jody. Yeah, guys, Bill Mooney just getting out of his car now. The, the top of the car was crunched down so much, so that's why he wasn't able to get pulled out right away. A lot of the guys, the, the workers here, trying to just raise that up so he could have enough room, but he was moving around in the car fine. It looks a little bit woozy as they've just taken him out of the car, but uh, pretty shaken up. And Bill Mooney, of course, won this race, our televised race a year ago, so tough break for him tonight. And it just has not been Bill Mooney's night. He started in the back of his heat race. He could not move up. Started in the back of the feature. Could not move up. And last year, he really got going on the high side. And that's where Mooney said he really enjoys running on this speedway. But again, that groove is just not there this evening. Yeah, the track really hasn't widened out all that much. It, uh, it is what it is, but tonight just wasn't his night. There's a look at Mooney take a look so watch the 10 of Travis Robertson Robertson right there something went wrong with Robertson he went sliding off the track lost control and then the very tail end here you'll see Mooney get tangled up with Holden and get dumped over so hopefully the damage not too bad on the number two as it gets hooked up to the wrecker and as you saw on the underside of the car there, that the left rear or the rear axle in the car was really skewed. When the car, when the late models, when they turn the car left, that left rear actually pulls forward to make the car go around the corner a lot easier. Then when you turn the car right, the tire goes back. So when you see the cars going into the corner here and they turn, when they turn the car sharp to the left, that car almost lifts up. The left rear almost lifts up. up off the ground. They are really something to watch from a turn. When you watch them go down the straightaway, you can really see the car bend. It's, it's interesting how these cars are set up and some of the suspensions and some of the systems they use. And you and I were in Dustin Strand shop last summer. And he told us a few of his tricks, not a lot of them, but a few of his tricks and how he's able to get his car working. But that's when you really get down hard on that left front tire, Chris. It's some, something that a lot of people don't realize with late miles. It's totally different than, than any other car. Yeah, and it's Dustin probably told you and me because we, we don't have a lot of a lot of a clue on a late model <laughs> thing. I'm sure he doesn't uh, he doesn't tell too many of the late model guys you know his secrets. It's it's uh, what it's it's that racer's bible. You know you don't want to tell everybody your secrets. Let them find out on their own. And but once you once you find out or once you find a hot setup, it's it works. It's clicking. Dustin Strand has been a very good race driver for a long try time, and he is currently first in the NLRA in standings. Three wins in his last six late model events. He did have some bad luck along the way as well. He tipped over his car actually at Devil's Lake just a couple of weeks ago. But eight top five finishes and the 2016 Wissota National Champion. He's a, he's a sharp guy. He has his own garage. He works on race cars all the time, and it's kind of his life. Yeah, and that's, that's another one of those father-son deals his dad Brian Strand used to race he used to race a number 71 late model um, Dustin was running the street stock 71 and then Dustin moved up to the B mods and then B mods A mods now the late models and he seems content running late models so that's what he really enjoys doing and again when the world of outlaws late models comes here to Grand Forks actually two weeks from tonight 
Dustin, one of those guys that looks forward to that competition and that challenge. He's one of the few drivers with the open motor that can actually run with those guys for a 35 lap, Amy. Yeah, and I've I've talked to Dustin a couple times. He's won in every single class that he's ever raced in in Grand Forks, except for a sprint car. So I, I mentioned to him, I said, you know, hey, jump in a sprint car, I bet you'll win in one of those too. And he, he said, well, uh, you have to borrow me your car if, if, uh, if that's the case. So Dustin Strand, though, he's just, he's one of those guys that can, he can get it done in any type of race car. He's a wheel man. We can see we've had some rainouts with the late models in all the races here at River City Speedway. We had one on June 8th, had one on May 18th. Ricky Weiss, he's always good here as well. Weiss was actually second here to Strand last week. But it's been Strand, Weiss have taken four of, or yeah, five of the six, like four of the five. And Joey Peterson has the other lone win back on May 25th. Strand will bring him back to green. You can really tell when he's driving, when he's turning the car back and forth, that left rear is lifting up. Yeah, it's really something when you look at the back wheels, how much those tires move. That back suspension moves with that car. So Strand and Balkan, first and second. Eddington in third with Corbett. See one of Tom Corcoran's been hanging around in the top five as well. And Tom's been running for a lot of years. He's 25, 30 years or so. He's He's been around a long time as well. So here comes Dustin Strand, bringing the field to green. Peterson jumped a little bit in the cushion, but was able to slide in the top 10. Three wide with Corcoran and Brad Seng hugging to the bottom. And here comes the 1R as well of Travis Robertson. So Robertson has slingshotted past Balkan now in to fourth place and looking to take over Eddington. Strand still leads easily. Ooh, the 14. Drop Grubin got out of shape and he dropped a few spots. Oh! Oh, somebody went flying into the fence coming out of turn three. Robertson. Travis Robertson in the 1R from Moorhead. Travis, and he appears to be moving in the car. That is certainly a good sign. He went crashing into that back fence where they have some of those wooden poles. Looking at the track, it looked like it turned three. He just went right off the track. I didn't see it until he was in the air. Good to see him get out. Travis Robertson out of the car. And around the fencing, some assistance to get down from his vehicle, and he appears to be okay. Oh, is that good to know and good to see. That must have been one heck of a wild ride. Getting checked out by the by the paramedics. As a driver, you always say I'm fine. I don't know if it's a pride thing or if it's if it's just adrenaline going, but you always say you're fine and the paramedics know better and they ask you a couple different times. And they may be cutting this feature back five laps, Chris, because of what's happened here in the last couple of restarts. They'll continue to try to dig out the one R from the fencing back there. Sunday is a pancake breakfast for the American Legion East Grand Force.
Jody Norstead is checking it out. Let's take a look at the replay. And Chris, you saw it first. Good race there with Eddington. And then watch this coming into turn three. Whoa. Holy cow. Snapped off a couple of those beams too. Holy smokes. Wow. And Travis Robertson walked away. And Jordy Norstead checking with him a little bit, making sure he's okay. Look, he must be explaining to Jody kind of what happened. But as you see, the way that tire was digging, so much grip on this track right now, Chris, that it just flung the car over on the side, and then he was just kind of out of control. Yeah, he just went into the corner, and he was... Watch the grip here on the tire, and there, just so much speed. And your instinct, turn the car right, save the car, so he saved it. Well, then your momentum and everything is just sailing. And right now, you're just hanging on. And that's like the Dukes of Hazard. Except a lot more expensive. Wow. Looks so he uh, he broke three of those sponsorship boards, and I believe those are 16 inches around on the bottom, and he snapped them off like toothpicks. Still breathing a little bit heavy, and certainly looks a little wild-eyed after the ride he just took. I have not seen anything like that here. Jody Norstead just had a chance to catch up with a young man out of Moorhead. Jody, how's he doing? Guys, he's he's doing okay. I mean, understanding what he just went through because you saw it, you can see these three uh, wooden columns that, that are holding up this billboard absolutely shattered by his car from my perspective. I mean, he, was, he just took off. And, and what had happened, Travis was kind of trying to describe it for me. Uh, his car got a little bit sideways coming out of turn three and he was he thought he was going to flip and barrel roll but then he got it straightened out hit the gun to try to go again and by that time he was destined to just take off in that track and really just shot through like a missile obviously just talking to him i mean it was like he had five cans of red bull he was so alert but uh, he was able to get out and he, he's just fine hasn't complained about any problems injuries or anything like that walking around just fine but obviously uh, just in complete disarray of what just happened yeah maybe a little bit of adrenaline thanks so much Jody for the report trackside yeah I think the adrenaline is running through Mr. Robertson right now and understandably so yeah absolutely it uh that's that's uh a, you know a credit to the safety equipment too you know he's, he's probably got one of those safety seats in the car he's got probably got a head and neck support um crashing that hard that fast into something that solid and got out walked away well, we've seen a couple of big spills we saw a barrel roll earlier but that was like a car just jumping off a hill at full speed trying to jump over a cliff or something i mean i've just never seen anything like that And there's a chance maybe we go green-white checker here to finish this race with the couple of reds we've had, a couple of tip-overs. Bill Mooney just laps before on the restart, took a tumble, and a lot of cars get damaged pretty significantly here tonight. And I'll be more curious how they fix that back fencing area over there. And back there, something like that. I mean, there's, there's nothing behind it besides, you know, gravel. Um, so something like that might just be fixed next week. Um, there's still fencing back there that'll that'll stop a car from, you know, going into the into the pond about a quarter mile away. But well, there's what's le left of the car from Travis Robertson. You can see the front end, how smashed in that car was, and that must have been kind of right in the middle there, Chris, where one of the poles went that he snapped.
Trying to get to a point where they can cut enough things free, Chris, to at least get the car movable back to the pits. Yeah, I was just going to say they're they're uh, trying to find a place to grab onto it with the tow truck, and more than likely they'll grab onto it with the front and the back. Well, the back didn't get hit with nothing, so that was easy to to pick up, and then uh, just dig as dig as much as you can, try to clear out a little spot so you can hook up the front. Well, after the late model feature concludes, we get the sprint cars out here, and if you think the late models are going fast, holy smokes, look out for the 410s. And that's a, kind of a, a, a deal you get with these fast racetracks. It's, there, there's not a lot of passing, so you gotta be aggressive. Um, there's not a lot of give with the tracks, just like you just saw. Car gets sideways a little bit, and they're staying in the gas because they, they can't lift. And then you get cars crashing, you get you get some uh, you get some problems. That's why a lot of drivers do like to have a little drier racetrack. Slows the slows the cars down, slows the track down a little bit, and then it it brings the driver out. Travis Robertson continues to look over the damage as they try to get that car hooked up to the record. Now they've lifted it up. They've at least found a place to strap on to the vehicle. And there's a lot of work to do on that machine. Well, why don't we step aside as they try to clean up the rest of this terrible accident that Travis Robertson got into. Fortunately, he walked away. He looks like he's okay. The car, not so much. A wild ride for the young man out of Moorhead. Stay with us. More to come. The late model feature, conclusion, and then the 410 sprints are after this on Midco SN. Back here live at River City Speedway in Grand Forks, North Dakota for the Northern Outlaw Sprint Association. 25 lap A main event, 21 cars on the starting grid tonight. The track is fast and a little bit scary, so hopefully nothing significant ensues here in our final race of the evening. Shane Romling, Wade Nygaard in row one, Austin Pierce, Nick Omdahl two, Jade Hastings, Ty Hanton, followed by Jordan Adams, Blake Eglin, Chris Rand, and Mark Dobbine. Bob Martin, Jack Croker in row six with Cale Mack, Nick Randon. Brendan Weil, Braden Pendulli, Tanner Wist, Tom Eglin, Brendan Mullen, and John Sorison. Your final starter tonight will be the 1AJ of Trevor Mell. Had some mechanical problems earlier. Hopefully has that figured out. Cars are getting pushed on the track as we speak. Take a look at the River City Speedway standings for the sprint cars. Mark Dobmeyer has been running here very consistently this year. Has not ventured too far from home. Austin Pearson second. And Austin has had a couple of really brilliant drives here in recent weeks. Has moved up from a very low starting spot to a very high starting finish. So keep an eye on the 2A of Austin Pierce tonight. Wade Nygaard won last Friday night here at River City Speedway. Also won at Norman County Raceway in Ada, Minnesota. Last Thursday night, Chris Rand, Jordan Adams, Nick Omdahl, Jane Hastings, Bob Martin, Blake Edmund, Tom Edmund, round out your top 10 here at River City Speedway. Cars are on the track. A few more getting ready to get pushed out. And right away you can instantly tell every driver knows the track's gonna be heavy, it's gonna be fast. Just judging by the wing angle, uh, the top wing angle on the car, it's a lot, it's very flat. Everybody's, every driver's wing is very, very flat. It's pushed all the way forward to get as much weight on the front end of the car versus having it on the rear end of the car. And obviously that's to keep your front end from flying right up in front of you when you're trying to drive down the straightaway. Yep, yep. The uh, the tires, they, they in their trailer you find your smallest left rear tire you got and your biggest right rear tire you have to make the, car want to go around the corner without you turning it as easy as possible. But this is one of these races, Chris, where whatever tires you run, you're going to be able to use them another week. They're not going to get burnt off tonight on this heavy surface. Yeah, no, no. You're going to... You, you, tonight, you probably could have started 
uh, with one set of tires, and you can run the same set of tires all night and not burn off the, the treads at all. What do you expect here tonight, Chris? I know, do you think drivers maybe take it a little bit easier through the first couple of turns, just based on what we saw in the late model feature? I mean, these guys are not, it's not like they're not paying attention to what's going on in the races before them. They recognize that this track is a little bit dangerous right now. Yeah, well, aggressive drivers will be aggressive. I, I think cer certain drivers that are towards the back are gonna try to do whatever they can to get up front, pass as many cars as they can on, on a start, because the starts are gonna be as, like, the starts are gonna be as the, the easiest time to pass a car. When you have all the cars bunched up, it's going to be the easiest time. If somebody messes up in front of you, they they check up, they hit the brakes, you can pass them on the outside, pass them on the inside. The, the front, or the very start of the race, and all the restarts are going to be where a lot of the passing is going to be. Time now for our Home of Economy car reports. The 8H of Jade Hastings, young man. From right down here. Yep, Grand Forks, North Dakota native. He, uh, he's, uh, I believe, 20 years old. He's, he ran go karts when he, uh, you know, growing up, and and he won a lot in the go kart. He was very successful in that. Moved up to the sprint car ranks about three or four years ago, and uh, uh, he's he's running a J and J chassis, and I, I like that because that was the chassis that I ran when I when we when we retired. See how the 8H does. Again, he may be. World of Outlaws A Main here two weeks ago. And last week's Saturday show was canceled. The Friday show did get in, the one that Wade Nygaard won. Mark Dodmeyer had the lead of that race until about a lap and a half to go where he jumped the cushion in turn one and two. And unfortunately for Mark, that ended his night. Jordan Adams actually had a big lead and then there was a caution in front of him. Brendan Wilde actually spun in front of him. And here are the highlights from last week's race. Here's Jordan Adams. Watch the 28 at the top of your screen here going through turns one and two. Watch the six get a little bit loose and Adams had to go low to avoid it. Dobmeyer also spun out. Fortunately both drivers returned. Adams' car wasn't quite the same and then Wade Nygaard led. Dobmeyer took the lead back. A little bit of a dicey pass here by Mark going into one into two. Wade tried to get him back here going into three and four was unable to do so. And then, just as Mark was getting set to take the white flag in another lap, boom, bounced it over the cushion, flowed over the cushion, and Nygaard goes on to take the victory, his first at River City Speedway this season. So we are set for green. 21 cars on the grid. Chris Ranton, Mark Dobmeyer on the front row, Blake Egland and Jordan Adams in row two, Ty Hanton, Jade Hastings row three, Nick Omdahl, Wade Nygaard at four, and Austin Pierce and Shane Romling will make up row five. The 13, certainly the car to beat from the front row. Here we go. Clean start through one and two. Dobmeyer out to the early lead. Jordan Adams takes the third spot away. And Jane Hastings has shot into fourth place. And here comes Ty Hanton into fifth. Austin Pierce is already moving up. Wade Nygaard is moving up. Dobmeyer already in the lap traffic, two laps in. Dodmeyer has to slow up a little bit. Got caught in the lap traffic. That'll allow Rand a chance to get a little bit of room. But it's going to be tough to catch the 13. Oh, we got a, a couple of cars together in turn number two. That looks like Bob Martin and Shane Romling getting together. And that will bring out a caution. Looks like Shane got just a little bit sideways coming out of two, and Bobby had nowhere to go. And Luckily for them, they... Uh, they didn't go over, but I think they hit pretty hard where the front ends might have been, might be toast. There's a look at the 31 of Shane Romling. Would have been starting on the front row had it not been for the inversion. 
Mark Dahmeyer actually would have been starting ninth, but they drew the number 10, so Mark goes from ninth all the way to the outside of row one as Martin heads back to the trailer. Trying to untangle the two cars, and the 13 has been blowing everybody away here tonight. It'd be tough to catch that guy. Mark Dabeyer didn't lose a race here at all until last week. Of course, the World of Outlaws on the 15th was able to go all the way from 25th to 9th after taking a provisional at the t tail end of the field. It looked like he was on his way to his fourth win of the season last week. As you saw in the highlights, that didn't happen, but Mark has been running here more often than he has in the past, but again, wants to stay closer to home. You can't fault him, you know, it's, uh, as a, as a man gets older, you got you, you develop a family, and and uh, you got to spend time with the family too. Mark did tell us before the race that he's going to go to Cedar Lake Speedway next weekend to race in a pair of Outlaw shows out in New Richmond, Wisconsin. That's a fun little track, third mile, banked, very similar to this one, a little bit bigger. Fun place to watch a sprint car race, and then Mark also plans on going to Mandan to race in the Governor's Cup at Dakota Speedway at the end of July. And then of course, after that, he will be spending about 10 days in Knoxville, Iowa. We'll run the 360 Nationals and then stay for the 410 Nationals the following week. So we'll get on the road a little bit. Mark Dottmeyer has been one of the best here at River City Speedway for quite some time. Finished ninth in the World of Outlaws feature. We'll get a chance to go against the Outlaws again next weekend. Four NOSA wins total. Came over the victory at Casino Speedway. Last Sunday night on a really tight track. I had not seen sprint cars on that track before out in Watertown. Boy, they can come around there in a hurry. So dynamite, so far so good. Should be noted, we didn't really mention it, but Dave Lundstra came back on board to help sponsor Mark's car this year. And they were partnered together for a couple of years until Mark got together with Jimco Motorsports and Ryan Grindy, and then that partnership ended. Yep, uh, Dave Lundstra and Mark Dobmer had a lot of success together as a team. They won a couple outlaw shows together in Sioux Falls. They, uh, they won a prelim night at the Knoxville Nationals, and he beat some pretty heavy hitters that night. Uh, Jason Myers was in his, in his prelim night, and I believe that year Myers actually won the, the World of Outlaw points. And Mark drove away from Jason Myers. It was, it was really fun to see a local guy that you race against win at the national level like that. Mark was third in his preliminary Knoxville Nationals evening last year. Had a good run. And Jimco Motorsports still has a car based out of Grand Forks. Hunter Schoenberg is now running the 97G, and they're just running select events. They were here for the World of Outlaws a couple of weeks ago and are on the road again this weekend. Yeah, I believe, Knoxville. I was going to say, I believe they're in Knoxville tonight. And would not be surprised to see them at Cedar Lake Speedway next weekend as well. So Rand and Dottmeyer. Dottmeyer has selected the outside lane. That certainly makes sense for the way Mark likes to run. Jordan Adams will start on the outside of road two with Jade Hastings. Four laps down, 21 remaining here on Mitko SN. Romling and Martin done for the night. 19 cars remain. Going down the back stretch. 
Austin Pierce has moved into sixth. Chris Rand hangs on to the lead, but Jade Hastings looking to take over the second spot. Trevor Mel pulls into the infield. Todd Meyer continues to roll. Taking the high side around Kale Mack and Brennan Wild. Jade Hastings still battling it out with Chris Rant. Hastings, bicycles out of control and over the banking in turn two. That was a heck of a save. Got it up on two wheels a couple different times and ended up driving it off the track to save it. And I don't know, maybe a tire went down there on him. Just kind of peeking at him around the banking, that banking, that left rear. Looked a little soft. You're absolutely correct there, Brian. And there's not a lot of air pressure in these left rears. Um, sometimes you run as low as three, three and a half pounds in the left rear, upwards of six. I mean, there's very seldom more than, you know, six, six pounds in that left rear tire. And you put all that weight back on that left rear tire and, and it's pretty easy to, to pop off the bead there. So Hastings crew will try to get that left rear changed here and get back out on the track. He'll have to tag the end of the field. Jordan Adams will move up to third. Ty Handen have a good, having a good run. He's up to fourth and Austin Pierce up from ninth to fifth. As you can see, they're, they're changing the tire here. There's one nut that holds this tire on. So they'll spin that one nut off. Throw the other tire on, throw that nut back on, tighten it up, drop the car, give it one more little snug, and ready to go racing again. Yellow remains as Jade Hastings continues to get that tire changed. And as Chris said, Bill, a couple of tight pulls, drop the car, one more good one, and get him back out there. There's already a four-wheeler behind him, ready to push him back out. What they're putting in the car right now is called a, a tire bleeder. Uh, it, it lets air out of the tires so that the tires always set at a certain temperature. And as the tire heats up, it bleeds off that air. So it's always set at five pounds because as the tire heats up, you don't want that air pressure to keep building and loosen up the car. You want it to stay consistent. Now on that right rear, Chris, what how many pounds of air are you running in that thing on a night like tonight? On a night like tonight, I wouldn't be surprised to see some guys at 15. Um, most of the time, you know, you're sitting around 10, you know, 10 to 12, you know, like I said, tonight, 13, 14, 15 pounds maybe. Just because the tires are gripping so Tire. much on this heavy surface. The, the sidewalls, you don't want the sidewalls to be folding under the car. You want the sidewalls to be as straight as you can, as hard as you can. They probably got a really stiff right, right rear shock on the car. Uh, very, uh, a big tie down shock on the left rear to keep the left side of the car down and the right side of the car up. 17 cars remain on the track. Jade Hastings will tag the tail end of the field. Tough break for the youngster. Dobmeyer back to work. And we have some cars kind of getting bounced around a little bit like bumper cars down the front straightaway. Wait. Nygaard lost a, lost a bunch of ground. Tom Meyer continues to lead. Chris Rand trying to stay with him. Jordan Adams in third. Ty Hanton fourth. Blake England up to fourth. Austin Pierce trying to make a run. Tom Meyer in a lap traffic again. trying to split lap cars. He's able to get past Tanner Whisk, and now has to get by Ray Pendley. He's able to do that. Adams now has some lap cars to deal with. Mark Dobbyer has a huge lead over Chris Rand, about three seconds. Now 
Myers lead now almost a half lap as he got in a little bit of trouble. Jack Croker was in front of him. Dobmeyer puts on the brakes and gets around him. Trying to work around Nick Omdahl. Jordan Adams continues to run in third hand, trying to run him down. We have a car around and spun out in turn two. That is Nick Ranton. Nick Ranton took a big spill down the front straightaway here a week ago. The 55, a rookie, the brother of Chris Ranton, who currently runs second. And it certainly appears like Mark Dobler is on his way to win number four here at River City Speedway this season. Yeah, barring any problems with them at, uh, or mechanical problems, he, uh, he's got the thing on, on cruise control right now. Good run for Jordan Adams. Still sits in third. Ty Hanton having a good run, as is Blake Eglin. Blake Eglin up to fifth. And you know what? Cruise control probably wasn't the right term there. He's been... He's been driving the wheels off that car. He, uh, it's fun to watch him get slice and dice through traffic here. Ren has it turned around and he will push off and tag the field. How about Jade Hastings? Had to tag the end of the field. I believe he's up to seventh place, seventh or eighth. Not sure if he got by Wade Nygaard in that last restart. I think Mark had almost lapped up to seventh or eighth. I think uh, Nygaard was just about ready to go a lap down before that caution came out. Well, the lead over Chris Rand was just about four and a half seconds. Eight laps remain here at River City Speedway in our final feature event of the evening on Midco Sports Network. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday evening. Been a lot of fun to be here, partner. A lot of fun to be here, absolutely. It, uh, it's always fun. We should do it every week. <laughs> Good to see you. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Brian Sean and the four-time Northern Outlaw Sprint Association champion, Chris Shearick, joining you here on this uh, late evening. Had a little bit of rainfall here even tonight before the late model feature. They were able to work it in. The weather has held out. We're going to be able to get this NOSA feature in, so all is well. All is well. Here we go. Dobmeyer out fast again. Austin Pierce is up to fourth and taking over the spot for third from Jordan Adams. Pierce started ninth. Dobmeyer to lap traffic once again. That's a slow up a little bit to get past Tanner Whisk and Brennan Wild. White flag is out for Dobmeyer. One more circuit remains for the 13. Underneath Jack Croker. And your Buffalo Wild Wings checkered flag will go to the Buffalo Wild Wings number 13, Mark Dobmeyer, picking up win number four on the season here at River City Speedway. Chris Ranton second, Austin Pierce third, Jordan Adams fourth, and how about Jade Hastings coming home fifth? Great run for the eight after tagging the end of the field. And Mark Dobmeyer will park at victory lane once again. Over 100 wins at this speedway. Well, Dynamite will put it on the trailer, head down to Wisconsin next weekend for a couple of shows with the World of Outlaws. You, 
mentioned in the pits uh, when we were talking to him earlier. We asked him what his plans were for this weekend. He goes, we're racing tonight. We're going to the lake tomorrow. Yep, we're going to enjoy it. Take the rest of the weekend off. He goes, you know, we originally planned to go to Knoxville, run a two-day show with the World of Outlaws down there, 40 cars in the field down in Knoxville. And ironically enough, Jason Johnson, the number 41, would have been the 41st car on the grid. It's so interesting to me how things work out like that. Yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy and pretty 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 amazing. So Don Meyer picks up another victory. Some of the fans start filing out. Treated to a pretty good night of racing. Some high speeds as the 31 of Shane Romling gets towed into the pits. Mark Dobmeyer led every single lap. Took the lead on lap one, had a couple of cautions, never seemed to bother him. Was able to slice and dice through traffic. And that's what makes this guy one of the best in the upper Midwest. Got a little sideways there as Jack Croker slid to the high side of the track, but Mark able to save it. Bring home the number 13 Buffalo Wild Wings. Another victory here at River Cities. And the track never really did widen out, Chris. We had about a groove and a half, and that was it. Yeah, the uh, going into turn three, I, I just noticed now there there is a little bit of dry, but it's, I mean, it was still hammered down, still, still, uh, you know, if you're stuck up front, you're more than likely going to win that thing. Jody Norstedt will catch up with Mark here in just a moment, get his thoughts on tonight's race. Been a fun night of racing, a long night of racing with a couple of reds, not necessarily sprint car reds. We've had a couple of scary ones on the late model side, one really scary one on the A-Mod side as well. Mark Dobmeyer celebrating with his, one of his kids. And now Jody Norstead is standing by with the winner, Mark Dobmeyer. Tell you what, Mark, watching you out there on the track, if fans at home, if you're ever in need of an Uber driver in rush hour, this is your guy. What, what is that like out there when, when you're kind of flying around and, and dodging cars, whether it be on the high side, low side? I tell you what, it was, it, it was wild. This is probably the... Uh, smoothest, stickiest track I think I've ever seen here at River City Speedway. That was that was wide open, uh, never lifting a bit for the corners. That was just ripping around and then come up on lap cars. A lot of guys are too tight, so all of a sudden they'd wash up in front of you, and you had to make some uh, sudden moves to uh, to avoid them and, and get going where you need to be. It was uh, you had to be on your heads. You had to have heads up. That's for sure. How key was it that in the draw you got the outside position in, in lane one? This track was a tough one to pass on. Uh, it was definitely helped us out starting off the front. Um, they drew, you know, we didn't have a good heat race. We struggled in the heat race, about flipped it over, and uh, somehow they drew that 10 pill invert, which started us a front row outside. So uh, it's not not very normal for me. I can start on front row, so I take advantage of it whenever I can. Nice to get back in the winner's circle. I mean, last week you, you had a blip over there, and then in Ada you had a tough luck, but you had two wins out of the four that you were at. Nice to get back in the winner's circle. I tell you what, it feels great. This, uh, this team's been strong everywhere, we, everywhere we've been. Uh, we've had a little bad luck with a couple equipment failures here and there, but overall we've had we've had a strong team, and I can't uh, thank my hardworking crew back there that uh, helps me out day in and day out, and uh, all these great sponsors behind me with Buffalo Wild Wings and Lunster Motorsports, K-Star Egg Services, and uh, Dammer Trucking. These guys uh, get us on the road every week and get us where we need to be. And now you take a little bit of a break? And, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm very... <laughs> This summer's been absolutely chaos. We've uh, we've organized everything, been out racing, and we haven't had a weekend off for about three months here. And we've been it's been late nights every night. So uh, we're racing tonight, and then I'm taking these uh, my two little boys here to the lake, and uh, we're gonna have some fun this weekend on the jet boat. Sound good to you? What do you think, Ty? Oh, I got a guess. That's good. That's good. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Mark and Ty Dowmeyer. Back up to you guys. That is about one of the best victory kisses I think I've ever seen in victory lane there from Mark Dowmeyer's son. Congratulations to Mark. The number 13, win number four for Mark here at River City Speedway. This season, we'll be back to close things out from here at the legendary bull ring. Thanks for staying with us on a wild night of racing. Welcome back to River City's Speedway in Grand Forks, North Dakota as we wrap up 
our evening of live racing here on Midcove Sports Network. All races in the books. Congratulations to all our winners. And pretty much all our winners, winners, Chris, came from the front row with the exception of Dustin Strand, who was by far the fastest late model here tonight. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I kind of had a, a hunch with, uh, with the way the track was going. Everybody was going to run the bottom. Dustin wasn't going to run the bottom. He was going to go to the top and see what was up there. Found something up there, and he took off. A very fast track. We heard Mark Dodmeyer say it was one of the stickiest, smoothest tracks that he's ever had when he's raced here. We saw that in the speed of the cars, Chris. It was almost scary fast, and we saw that with a couple of really bad wrecks we had here the night as well. Yeah, it, uh, I, I know a lot of the body guys, they don't like tracks like this, but what can you do when you have you know rain, as much rain as we had, and then the little shower we had right before the late model heat or feature. So, I mean, it's we were kind of dealt a bad hand, but, I mean, the track crew did a great job. The track was smooth. Like Mark said, it was fast, it was smooth, and then really that's all that the track crew can do to make racing what it was. It would have been interesting to see what some of the lap times were. I'm guessing we were getting close to sub-10 lap times, even in the feature of the sprint car race, Chris. That's how fast the track was. Yeah, I know in the heats, they were they were just over 10 seconds, and I think in the feature, they were even faster. Um, it would be cool to see, you know, nine-second lap times again. It's a lot of fun, partner. A lot of fun. Thanks for joining us once fun. again. Yeah. Appreciate you joining us as well here on Midco Sports Network for live dirt track racing. We're back in two weeks from Dakota Speedway in Mandan for the legendary 50 on the Dakota Modified Tour. It was a wild night. Some good racing, some good action, and a lot of fun. Thanks so much for joining us all evening long here on Midco SN. We're glad all of our drivers that were involved in some really dangerous looking spills walked away from those wrecks. They were bouncing, they were grooving, they were moving, and we enjoyed being here with you. For Chris Shearick and Jody Norstead, plus our entire Midco SN crew, I'm Brian Sean saying so long from Grand Forks.